The following is a presentation of iRacing on PTR TV. We'd like to thank all of our channel partners for their support. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. The first short track race of the season for the 100% Division I Cup Series. We've been to road courses, we've been to super speedways, we've been to pseudo super speedways, but for the first time this season we hit a track under one mile in length. Who is going to have luck on the very difficult and slick track here in Henrico County, Virginia? Let's find out together. Welcome everyone to PTR TV for tonight's coverage as stated of the 100% Cup Series here for what is being deemed as the Strawberry Hill 400 full distance race here on a Saturday night. It's gonna be myself, Corey Silva in the booth and doing the commentary along with Cody Bird, driver who is uh, stepping out of the seat for tonight's race. And of course, Andre Grandbush here on a regular basis giving you guys the content here. So guys, welcome to Richmond. Welcome to another one of these long distance Saturday nights on what should be a very difficult Richmond Raceway. I tell you what, Richmond is never easy on the iRacing service. It doesn't really matter what iteration of the tire model you're on or what stock car you're driving. It's just a tough track. Uh, very little banking uh, in three and four, and a little bit more banking in one and two. Uh, you're going to see a drivers fighting loose, I think, is going to be the, the big thing for tonight, just fighting loose, trying to save your tires. And, uh, I talked to a few of the drivers coming into this race, and they said anything beyond 30 laps and you're driving on ice. So it's going to be at least fun for us up in the booth. We'll see about for the drivers on track. Yeah, that's why I'm up in the booth, Andre, last night in Division 2. Well, didn't even make it to lap 30 before I was skating on ice. So we packed up the talent and uh, came up here, if we want to call what I had talent. Oh, talent in the booth, hope it is... I don't want to say which talent you have more, but we're, we're glad you have you up here. So, got to whip through this post, this pre-race show. John Delaney on top of the playoff pitcher, two wins. Benefield, uh, Giglio, Hall, and White all also have wins on the season. You can see the cutoff line there uh, with RJ Root and Alex Vanison. Two drivers we expect to be higher up, but we'll see how they are for luck here on this evening. Our team points on the season. Apex with a gargantuan lead over Dirty South, but 160 points there. Team Conti lost a spot last week. Elite gains one over Prodigy, so that is our team standings and our rookie standings of sorts. Patrick Gitter overtakes Jim Schofield, so he becomes the rookie points leader and uh, has been very, very quick uh, race after race and currently second on the warm-up grid, so uh, definitely one to watch is that number 21 driver, Patrick Gitter. I can tell you what, the battle for the Rookie of the Year is definitely interesting this year. It's been a while since we've had a battle like this, but 19 points after, what is this, five or six races uh, is pretty impressive. Uh, that's less than half the field's worth of points, so they could very easily change hands again tonight and the next week and back and forth, so on and so forth, because they are so evenly paced, it would seem. So definitely going to be fun to keep an eye on those guys tonight. Uh, Patrick Dinner has had quite a bit of speed as a rookie. I'm a little bit surprised it took him that long to get to the front of the rookie of the year standings, but uh, Showfield has put up one heck of a fight, so uh, a ton of fun there. But we're getting to the end of practice. 15 seconds left for these guys to get that car down pit road and load up, and then uh, we're going to be hitting the grid. Of course, qualifying already done throughout the week and last chance qualifying done earlier today, uh, which means we're going to be able to get gridded up, pace, and right into the action, and we should have a graphic for the starting lineup once they get all set up in a row here see some cars pulling down uh, on the apron that's something you wouldn't do in real life but in sim hey uh what's it hurt yep, and that is the timer that was just alluded to so let's go ahead head down trackside for our espn S speed world starting lineup i gotta love this song Robert Miller on the pole here tonight with Adam Benefiel on that outside of the front row. Third place finds Patrick Gitter. Fourth place finds Lucas Hoitzma. 
And then in fifth, we find Blake Giglio, John Delaney. See if he can do Delaney things from the sixth position. Alex Murray in seventh. Dustin Hall, one of the prior winners this season in eighth. And then rounding out our top ten, we have Boyd Hogan or Hogan. I forget which one it is. And then Andrew Dyson. He was a quick guy in Division Two last night. And outside of the top 10, Matt Long is not actually going to be starting the race. He had a bit of an issue with his internet, so uh, he will not be starting alongside Neil Pearson in the number 62. A uh, heartbreak from last uh, night's race. And Ralph Hutchinson is going to be P13 right alongside Clayton Hoffman in that 92 there. 14, 15 goes to Travis Cranborg right alongside Rookie of the Year contender Jim Schofield. 16th position is going to be Matt Dicciani right alongside Brandon Pierce in 18. RJ Root is going to take 19th on the starting grid right alongside 20th place Jeffrey Souza. Starting 21st is going to be Jason S. Taylor and starting 22nd is Rob Tracy. 23rd is Chris James, 24th Chad Sander. 25th JC Gibson and 26th Wayne Grassy. Starting 28th Alexander Saint and 29th Sean O'Brien Jr. And starting 30th, Kyle Ammon. Uh, there's a mysterious P27 that is omitted from the race. No idea why. Tanner Marty in 31st. Drumhill at 22nd, 32nd rather. Robert Anderson all the way back in 33rd. I don't think he'll stay there. Dalton Mobley, Nolan Hodge in 31st, 35th. And then rounding out the clues, Paget, Medeiros, Princeton, Hickenbottom, and Kevin Steele, the Pennsylvania native. So that is our PTR TV starting lineup here on the evening let's go down quickly and cover our keys to the race and race details keys to the race tire fall off if you watched a division two last night you saw how spread out it was how slick these conditions were cody can attest to that slipping and sliding as i just mentioned and the incident cap we're in tank mode a long race you can get some damage you can get some contacts built up but uh 15 is the limit here tonight as we uh We'll find out our Sunshine Boy on Twitch. Race details open set up. 15 incidents, seven sets of tires in the pits. Three more than we had on offer last night. Stages are at 70 and 230. I triple, quadruple, and quintuple check that. Those stages actually are right. So 70 and 230. But here we are. Pace car has pulled into the safety of pit lane. And very early in the zone goes Miller getting this race underway. Huge jump over the rest of the field as they dive off into corner number one. Yeah, that was quite an interesting start. I heard some chirping over the radio about that. I think it caught Menefield off guard. He's going to drop a couple positions back there and have to settle into the outside lane, which I don't know a whole lot about Richmond. It's been a while since I watched a race here, but... Uh, yeah, is it, that a restart? Viol that was a start violation there. Yep, that is going to be a violation for our pool setter, so he's going to have to come down pit road and serve a penalty. Now, uh, if we read road course or maybe a super speedway, I'd say uh, no harm, no foul, but... Here at the short track, serving that kind of penalty, that's going to put you down a lot of time. And it looks like Benefield is prepared, preparing to serve a penalty as well. So the 83 coming down pit road. That might be why we heard some chirping out of the 83 team, because he got a violation for that. Now remember, this league does not clear black flags. It does not matter if it was somebody else jumping the start or getting you bottled up that gave you the penalty. Uh, the admins are in the race. They can't review the issues in real time. So... Uh, they leave it in the hands of iRacing. If iRacing beams, you get a black flag, you get a black flag. So uh, both of uh, the front runners for the very start of the race coming down pit road, going several laps down. And guys, look at who that hands the lead to. Current Rookie of the Year leader, Gitter. Yeah, Patrick Gitter has shown speed all throughout so far in this early part of the season, only being not even a fourth of the way done. Quick math, not great. But... And he's showing he has speed to compete with the top guys in the series. Yes, he does get her up right up there. And you'll have to correct me on this, Andre, because I know it was Giglio and Hoitzma who were in a photo finish at Atlanta. I forgot which one was on top, but either way, both of them running P2 and 3 right now. So good for you to see Murray in fourth. Boyd Hoggett in fifth. Delaney, even though he had two guys pull off, still in sixth. So uh, clearly hasn't... Uh, progress through the field. Dustin Hall is behind him. As you can see, looks like a lot of this track covered in shade, which uh, it'll drastically affect the track conditions here. We'll pull up our weather graphic. We didn't talk about that yet. 102 degree track to 83 in the air. So toasty day here in what I believe to be Strawberry Hill, as uh, I think you may be able to attest to that, Cody, with the uh, title of this race. But very, uh, very warm track conditions should only get warmer once the sun comes back out. 
Yeah, I had a chance to talk to Bryson Hexenball, who did the graphic pre-race, and I was a little bit confused about why the name was what it was, and he said that where this track sits is in Strawberry Hill, Virginia, and the track's original name was Strawberry Hill Raceway. So that's a little uh, fun fact nugget for you guys tonight. Hmm. I did not know that. I tend to know weird fun facts about tracks, but that is one I've never heard, so thank you for that, Cody. I also want to point out, I believe Boyd Hogan just served a penalty as well here on lap 7, so uh, I guess womp womp. Uh, we've got a lot of penalties so far tonight, guys. Yeah, we saw last night Matt Long in the 97 car, who is... Where is he right now? Is he even here today? No, he's not here again, so he might be dropping out of the Saturday series. Um, but he had a penalty last night, very late, uh, mid-race penalty there on the restart zone. So very finicky here at Richmond, but very strange that you see two drivers both go, uh, both, both guys on the front row getting penalized. I don't even see how that's physically possible. How could both guys uh, screw up that badly? But uh, definitely going to have to be careful, put that in the notebook here. Um, as to how to treat the rest of this race. But you can see Benefield just in front of Gitter here. Benefield on the tail end of the lead lap. So he would love to see a caution. But uh, I will say, I mean, I don't know if you, how many of you guys, uh, both watching or uh, in, with me in the booth, caught any of last night's race. But it was very, very green. Basically, we went entire stages without yellows. Didn't quite have green flag stops because the stages weren't long enough for that. But we were spreading out two, three, four second gaps. And the heartbreak story, Neil Pearson almost had Division Two last night until uh, shenanigans came afoot there on a green-white checker. But uh, this track, very slick. And I do think we're going to have some long runs. And you can see these guys already slipping and sliding on quarter exits. Yeah, and to follow up earlier, uh, Matt Long actually had a tree branch hit one of his power lines uh, with these high winds. So it caused him to lose power. But yeah, no, this track is not easy. And there is a caution somewhere around this three-quarter mile track. I'm hearing turn four, but I don't see it. We're looking at turn four. Yeah, I see. Uh, let me try to pull up my little events. It looked like Chad Sander was slow on the bottom yeah. of turn three and four. I will uh, cue up the graphic here and try to sort through it. Oh, there we go. I got something. I think it might have involved Boyd Hogan and maybe Sean O'Brien. Taking a look at the 3 wide TV replay. The number uh, what? what? What was that? Where oh, are boy. we? Or not 3 wide TV. I apologize. You're at the Sports wrong Cabin. track. PTR TV. I'm Thank at the you. wrong track. I'm on the wrong channel. Uh, PTR TV. But yeah, Boyd Hogan had doing well if John Delaney you know doing good is doing John Delaney things uh then Boyd Hogan driving it in 20 car lengths too deep and just murdering somebody <laughs> is doing Boyd Hogan things now I need a turkey roast graphic I've implemented a lot of different graphics since last week a roast graphic uh that is going to have to go on the docket for uh, for next week so uh but the shots have been fired yeah uh you know they might continue to get fired but go ahead Cody no, yeah, I, I think your opinion is very warranted. But, you know, we're here to cover a race, Andre, up until it happens again. So I, I did make that preface last night because uh, it was me and Jeffrey Souza in the booth last week, or Jeffrey Souza and I, if we want to use proper English. And uh, the caution that came out to basically throw the entire race away and change the entire outcome, we basically said it in the booth. It was intentional, and it was uncalled for. And I said, you know, we get paid. This is not free. We get paid. We get brought in here to have opinions and to attempt to be entertaining. So I know not, we're not always entertaining, but we can at least have opinions and, you know, call what we see. And if we don't like it, you don't have to like it, but we're, we're going to say it. I remember it. When, I, when I first started broadcasting for this league, um, because I'm not a professional broadcaster by any means, uh, I literally am only here because I wrecked two people in one race and it got Kevin's attention. Uh, I, and I asked Kevin, I was like, you know, what, what is my leeway here? How much freedom do I have on kind of assigning blame or pointing things out that people have done? Uh, and Kevin basically said, say whatever you want. So ever since then, I've pretty much taken it uh, upon myself to uh, be pretty open with the opinions. And uh, that's what you get here on not 3 wide, but PTR TV as well. I know Corey, uh, uh, kind of similar mindset to me, uh, you know, very, uh, very similar mindset in that uh, we're not going to be the uh, the NBC or the Fox that just kind of says nobody was at fault. 
You know, it's no, that's not what we're doing here. Well, I'm gonna, I'll asterisk what you said because I do think NBC is a little bit more um, biased towards kind of saying it as it is, especially Dale Jr. Uh, but Fox definitely sugarcoats everything to the point where you will need an insulin shot afterwards. And then they'll go to, com- and then <laughs> yeah. they'll go to commercial where they'll advertise candy so that way they can give you the insulin shot once it goes back live. So that we do try to avoid here. Uh, we'll try to uh, limit the amount of commercial breaks for your viewing pleasure here on the evening. But uh, the more cautions we have, the more likely it is that our partners, a.k.a. we need to go step aside for a drink in the potty. Uh, will come to fruition here. But we didn't see any pit stops, which is not much of a surprise. We do have seven sets, and it was a big focus last night because we had a 250-lap race with only four sets of tires. Now we have 150 more laps and three more sets. So I, I really don't think tires will be a huge deal unless we just have caution on caution on caution. But you never know how these things will play out, but we are on one to go. Everybody getting doubled up, stacked up. Get her on that inside lane and have to imagine guys that after both people on the front row on the initial start got black flag that this ought to be a very very cautious uh restart for all involved yeah so uh, banter aside i'm looking at the timing and scoring we've got adam benefield on the lead lap now i i believe he was able to serve his drive through and actually pass the leader back and get that lead lap uh, i don't think he required the lucky dog i believe the driver that got one of their laps back was robert miller uh, that last oh, caution and we he got some in there. Um, position but yeah some wheels been out front as the green flag flies and that's going to check up the outside lane of the field kind of trapping the lane up there where you don't really want to be but it's patrick getter out front as he has been pretty much since lap two he's got lucas hoitsma behind him alex murray's worked his way up to third dustin hall uh currently sitting in p5 so that number one seems to have some speed tonight ralph hutchison uh he's been uh I don't, I don't want to say part-time, but he hasn't been running the most races lately, and now he's come back to Richmond and seems to have a pretty good night going. Yeah, and going back to how the outside is spinning its tires, uh, a lot of it has to do with that outside groove is not very beneficial. Um, anytime you go up there, you could try to make a quick cut back across, but it doesn't work sometimes. Yeah, outside there on iRacing, not always the most uh, advantageous place to be. On some tracks it is. Richmond, it used to be a good outside lane here about three, four years ago, back in the uh, the fabulous V6 era, but these v- this V7 tire model, or whatever the uh, verbiage is of it now, not quite beneficial of that outside lane. So right around the bottom here may alter around as more heat and rubber gets in the track, so we'll see how that does come into fruition. We do have our famous PTR fanboy Brandon Bruce here in chat hoping for a good run for his uh, buddy uh, Devin Medeiros who's in our partner league here on Monday nights. Devin all the way back in 27 so uh, not the best start for him here but let's go back through the field as we have a lot. Oh there we go. Oh we got a spinner. Tanner Marty I believe if I can find him there. Tanner Marty, another one that's in our Monday series, and uh, he, he saw, saw at the corner of the shot there while we were kind of trying to switch to it that problems were going afoot, so we'll replay on screen where we will figure out what foot the problems lied on. Mark Padgett, uh, that was a little bit of a block with three wide, Ooh, and Marty... Yeah, I think a, a minuscule amount of net code there. I mean, but. it would have been contact, I think. But well, but the oh, net this is an opportunity. Been. This is an opportunity right here. Um, hold on, this is an opportunity. In case I didn't say that, I want to see how much net code there was. Let's see. Can you fit a? Uh... No, it doesn't work. My my whiteboard doesn't work. Oh, no. Oh, man. We were so excited for that, too. I was so excited. This is a bigger letdown than Cody in the top five. Oh, okay. Now it works. Oh, oh, I, now I, I, I didn't put it on the replay scene. I have to put it on the replay scene, not just the live mm. screen. So that's just a, a whiteboard newbie error. But we will uh, take care of that in due course here. So... But either way, that was just a ve- that was a very aggressive move. I don't think there's any uh, 
question on that. But early in the race, you know, we'll see what happens. Mark Padgett was there to the inside, and I guess if we're calling things out, Padgett has been one that has been in many, many a situation this season. I think I coined one race that hit everything except the lottery, so... He's trying to uh, live true to that motto here, but lap number 26, so very early. Second caution, so the D1 guys, we had a 26-car field, and we ran stage one completely green last night. So these, uh, you can tell the aggression a little bit higher. I think the track temp a little bit higher to boot. Let's check it. Now that the sun is back out, it has stayed the same, 102 on the track, but I think the aggression is a little bit higher here tonight. Well, I don't know if it's aggression or if it's just the fact that we've got a full field, the track is really hot, and, uh, you know, obviously the aggression could play a little bit into it, but I think it's numerous factors. I also want to point out that Robert Miller was the lucky dog recipient on this caution, so he's back on the lead lap after the lap one infraction. Uh, let's just hope he doesn't uh, get another penalty on this restart. Uh, it tends to be the way you go. You know, you climb a mountain, you, you overcome uh, the, the gap from a mistake you made, and then you just make another one. At least I do, and that's why I'm in the booth and not driving. But uh, Boyd Hogan is currently our only car on the track that is laps down. He's currently two laps down. Uh, knowing the way this race has gone so far, I don't think he's going to struggle to get those two cautions to get the, the laps back. But we'll have to wait and see. You never fully know. Uh, things could change in an instant. The race could go green from here on out. Uh, you never really know. But uh, still, everybody out on track. Lights are on in the pace car. And uh, really not a whole lot of attrition. We're seeing these cars in tank mode. I think just one year ago, guys, backing it into the wall like Tanner Marty did probably would have been damaged bad enough to really hinder that car and make it non-competitive but i think the way things are right now he's probably all right yeah it's very confusing to me because i you know i racing did announce why the net the damage model became what it was with the physics change and they had to go retroactively go back and update all the cars with the new damage model and fix them but it just baffles me what every other car that they have fixed why they have left one of the most important cars in the service and the most well-viewed cars in the service they're basically leaving it last on the list. I uh, don't quite understand that, but at least it's known that uh, being April Fool's Day, iRacing did do a not April Fool's teaser and teased a rain shot, so maybe we'll have that on the service before 2027, but we'll see what happens. And coming into the ever-dangerous restart zone here, Gitter trying to get it done. Entering the restart zone, nice jump there. I think it's a legal jump. Shouldn't have any worries. On the outside is Hoitzma. They're going to dive off to one with Murray to the inside of Hoitzma. Yeah, oh, Alex Murray got a great jump on that restart and now is looking on the inside of Lucas Hoitzma for second. He's been one that's been up towards the front every race, but it seems like he has that bad luck bite him at the very end. Yeah, Murray has had a lot of pace in pretty much every race that I've been in the booth for, and I haven't been in the booth as much this year as in years past, but every time I am around, I see that 22 battling up front, and then you're exactly right, Cody. It just seems like something bad always happens at, towards the end of the race, whether it's just getting caught up in an accident or uh, having some sort of issue with long run speed, strategy not playing out. Uh, but we know that he's fast, then generally, you know, bad luck can only hold you back so long. It can only ruin so many races. And I think eventually, if Murray keeps this pace up, he's going to have his night. And who knows, maybe this is his night. I know that, if I remember correctly, Rick Richmond is a track that he does like. He's pretty fond of it, which makes him, I would say, a minority in the field. I think a lot of drivers were not too fond of Richmond. They weren't looking forward to this race. But uh, if you're good here and, you, and you're comfortable, that's a huge advantage because uh, it's not a track that's very popular amongst the crowd. And, of course, morale matters a lot when you're piloting a 700-horsepower brick. Uh, but hey, there's your car on uh, screen, Cody, uh, number 13, except, oh, well, you're not in it. Yeah, yeah, no, I got uh, my hard card was pulled by the team um, prior to the race uh, for Jeffrey. And uh, he, he's making that 13 look better than it normally is, uh, currently running in the top 20, which, hey, can't say I've done very often recently, Andre or Corey. Or both. Big yeah, wiggle or there, there. I think he's. Oh, he, the, the, the talent may oh. still be in the in the seat there. He had a big wiggle there off a of turn two. Uh, that is Kyle Ammon just behind him, and now he's to the inside of Bobby Anderson. Anderson, and he started there, I believe, in the 30s, but he's trying to work his way up, going up into the gray, which 
you know, sometimes rubber gets hot and slick on these kind of weather conditions. So sometimes being out there in the green is actually going to be a little bit more beneficial for grip. So maybe that is what the five is doing right now. Oh, he's into the fence there, uh, crushing those Kellogg's cornflakes. So tank mode should protect him, but quickly scoping other battles out on the track. I don't see too much going on out front. We'll go a little bit further back. And you can see Adam Benefield, he's back there in 31st, trying to we weasel his way up. He's uh, to the inside of Dylan Kritz, who was one of the ones that was involved in some incidents last night in Division 2. Yeah, Division 2, obviously a good opportunity to try and learn the track. And even if you get involved in some incidents in Division 2, that's not necessarily an indicator how you're... Uh, oh, length. is Every that Souza? And yes, Souza's going to go three wide. He got a little bit loose, got down the bottom of the racetrack. Luckily, he's got the preferred lane. If you're going to be three wide, that's the place to be three wide is down on that yellow line. And it's going to sort out to two wide with Dalton Mobley. Maybe thinking about making it three wide again, but he's going to back out. Doesn't quite have the run. But I tell you what, Corey, I think that slide the number 13 did has kind of heated those tires up a little bit because he doesn't quite have that corner speed. You see even the cars on the outside are able to keep up right alongside his door. Yeah, the ghost of Cody, I think, is still within the vehicle. Uh, as Souza was, he was talking about it being 18th, 19th. Well, now he's back to 26th and perhaps getting past uh, on the outside lane. So uh, definitely he's going to have some work to do there. But uh, coming up front, we do have RJ Root starting to make his presence. Had a quiet start to the season, but uh, he's trying to make a pass there on Cranborg. Yeah, RJ Root is uh, another driver that's shown a lot of pace, but has that bad luck bug biting him currently. He always seems to be up towards the front, or in, in his case, uh, battled in top 10 at Atlanta when I spawned my tires. And, oh. oh, and there's a slide. It is uh, getting tricky out here, Andre. Yeah, it is the number 33 of Tracy got big sideways on the back straightaway. And actually, he's still off pace all the way to the front straightaway. So I don't know if he was just trying to let everybody go. He was afraid of maybe getting on the power there. But we're gonna take a look at the PTR TV instant replay. Got it right this time, we're on the right channel this time. But we're gonna take a look on the gyro cam. Keep your eyes on the steering wheel. He makes a pretty good save here. Obviously the back straightaway of Richmond, not the widest part of the track. So if you get sideways, you might find yourself in the wall pretty quickly. But luckily, Tracy was able to keep that thing just off the wall, using that very little runoff to his advantage and right back on track, letting the rest of the field go. So he gave up some time, but uh, the car is not damaged. The tire shouldn't be too awful damaged from that. So, uh, you know, if you're going to make a mistake, I'd say that's the way to make it. A lot of runoff space there to the inside. Alex Murray going for second here on Hoitzma through one and two. Hoitzma a little bit of a wash up on track, and that will open the door for Murray to the inside. Delaney there in fourth. He's going to try to fill the gap in and uh, put Hoitzma down too. But Hoitzma got a good run through the center of three and four, but couldn't quite carry it on exit. So that'll give Murray P2, and he will manage to shut the door on Delaney. So Delaney will stay in fourth, but Gitter pulling away by upwards of a second here. So showing that speed in that 21 rookie of the year points leader uh, starting to uh, show his stuff here very early in tonight's race as we are on lap 43. Again, racing to lap number 70 which will conclude the first stage. Yeah, and to start, you mentioned about, Dre, about how stacked this rookie field is. And it really goes without saying, I've been in the league for four years now. The only one I can even think of comparing this to was the 2021 group, Andre. Yeah, the 2021 uh, rookie of the year field was definitely uh, pretty stacked and then kind of had a, a roll, I guess you could say, where it was a little bit less, we, we weren't getting as many new faces and things had kind of stabilized and then, I don't know, the league kind of hit a boom, we got a lot of new drivers interested of all the different skill levels and uh, that obviously made for quite an interesting rookie of the year battle. There's Neil Pearson, the number 62, he started 12th, he's currently 7th, so he's up a few positions on the night, capitalizing on some mistakes. And we have to go back and just let people know what happened. So last night, Neil Pearson called the strategy call of the year. Everybody else had everybody had one set of tires left on the third stage. There was a caution with about 65 to go. Most every, everybody stayed out because they wanted to keep that set for a later caution. Pearson Pitt, he took that set of tires and then we went green. 
We went green, we went green. He took, he went from 16th to first, pulled away, leading the field by five seconds. Some shenanigans happened with some lap down cars, but two to go. Caution came out. He didn't have a set of tires. Everybody else did. Lost the race. And in the post-race interview, Benefield ended up winning. Benefield said, I didn't want to win that race. If I could have let him stay out there and win, I would have. But Neil Pearson showing the speed here. Even in the Division One race, he had last night won. Uh, but this division, even in the Division One race tonight, he's showing some serious speed. Looking to make a pass on Ralph Hutchison, even. Yeah, and the thing with Dale Pearson was he sure and absolutely dominated Indy Road Course. I believe that was the track that he dominated. But ever since then, we were like, oh, he's going to just come in for the road courses. No, he, he's been a factor on ovals as well. Yeah, he's definitely been uh, pretty competitive. And as you see right there, he's going to make a pass on the low line right around Ralph Hutchison. Seems like that number eight was fast on the short run. Now he's starting to kind of fade. So we're far enough into a run now without a caution that uh, we're starting to see what cars were set up for the longer runs, what cars were set up for the shorter runs. And unfortunately, that number eight just starting to slip down the running order a little bit as New Bruce capitalizes. He's got RJ Root behind him. Uh, and he's going to have to play a little bit of defense. But look at this battle, two by two. The 23 on the outside of the 82. A little bit of wiggle, but he's going to be able to make that move and get clear into that position. But behind him, the battle still rages on. I believe that is Kyle Amun himself. Amun. <laughs> for 25. There's a long story there. But Not a Saturn, Amun, but Amun. He is on the bumper. I believe if you, if you zoom in on the name rail, I don't know if you can pull it, but uh, he's got a move on his name rail, so a uh, little bit of a wiggle out of the 23. These guys has not given an inch here on lap 52, and look at this. Here comes Benefield to make it more interesting. Uh, who else but the number 83? He's going to try to slide on by Kyle Lammon and then maybe pick up a couple more out front. The number 23 ME car. A little tribute to Ricky Bobby. What is ME? It's me. It's you, Ricky. I'm so rusty on that movie, you could call me Wallace. All right. I, I, I know Carlos isn't here to give you, like, the 2 out of 10, like, thumbs down thing, but just imagine that on screen. <laughs> I have a couple graphics in, in store here. So if, we, if we do get a little <laughs> bit feisty, uh, or if we do an interview with somebody in the care center, I do have a TV mature language graphic, so we are covered in that capacity. And we do have a couple for our... Uh, our temporarily loud engines and if i do go on a bigger rant so uh, andre the, if you are with me more we do a little bit more on ptr tv we may have to come up with a little personalized segment for you so we'll leave that up to our fans or you yourself to come up with that name but we do have to focus up front here because through all the shenanigans and banter john delaney's turned the wick up and delaney doing delaney things here right to the back bumper of gitter pulls to the inside and with no contestment the six goes, oh, take that back. Gitter's trying to fight there on the outside. Yeah, don't ever listen to me when I say the outside lane is not a viable option. It is not for me, but these guys obviously are making it look good as this battle, side by side, all the way through the corner, all the way through the front stretch. I, I think John's gonna get it down here, but I don't know, I've been wrong before. And John is gonna slide into the lead just barely, the 21 tucking in behind the rear bumper of that number six and try to use what little draft he can at such a short track maybe and now uh, see how that car handles in dirty air because this is something he's not experienced in oh i don't know 56 laps gonna be a, a bit of a different experience driving that car behind another machine but 54 laps led currently running p2 and uh, while these guys were battling that allowed alex murray to close up just a little bit as well he's less than a second behind our leader it was 0.8 seconds through the corner then extended to about a second through the trial -over. And a little bit further back, Matt Dicciani, he's up 10 positions on the night. Started P17, currently 7th, so that number 4 car is on the move, and he's pulling the 92 in tow. See, he is. You can see Damaris Hickenbottom up there. Oh, actually, that was RJ Root. I was going to say Hickenbottom not up there. He might have been a lap down, but Hickenbottom still on the lead lap there. Um, admin, 37th. We have uh, only Boyd Hogan off the lead lap here, so we'll see if Demarius can hang on the lead lap there. He's currently in a, a little bit of a battle with Wayne Grassy. They like to focus on the admins who help bring this lead to life, and we have some smoke on the front straightaway there. Could, Jeff, uh, Cody, what did you do? Come on, Cody. What, 
You got nothing to say to that? You got nothing to say. Um, well, my team owner is currently watching, so it may not be a good <laughs> idea for me to say anything, but... Um, well, I know exactly what he said. That looks just like you come out of turn four at Michigan in the trucks. Okay. Okay. We're, we're going to hurt some feelings <laughs> tonight now. But, hey, he's still running. He didn't He didn't throw in the towel. Got to give him some props. He's really uh, living up to that. Uh... He's a lap down, though, so he, he will hope that nothing happens in 10 laps or that Wayne Grassy uh, can stay on the lead lap because Wayne Grassy 15 seconds back. So as long as... Grass, he could stay in the lead lap and nothing else happens of note. Uh, Souza is still in free pass position for the lap 70 stage. Yeah, him taking the free pass position actually means that Ward Hogan is not going to be eligible for it. So, again, womp womp. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Jeffrey has in the car after uh, the end of the stage. But yeah, you just gotta hope Wayne Grassy or none of these other bad guys go lap down. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit of an uphill battle trying to get that lucky dog position. It's, it's one thing trying to get a front end lap down. Uh, Simmons are dealing with numerous laps down. That's when it gets dangerous because uh, if the run goes on long enough, eventually, well, somebody else is gonna go one lap down or just automatically in position. So, not a position that I envy, but look at that, the 0 9. Had to check up a little bit there. I think Gibson saw where that was headed, and luckily the Netco gods knew where those two cars were. So I don't think they could have got much closer. Um, but very respectful racing. I think he usually could have maybe moved them out of the way or gotten aggressive with it. But uh, you know, lap 64 out of 400. There's a lot of racing left tonight, and I think these guys know that uh, there's really no point in banging up your car and really ruining your chances too awful early. There's the number 15, Robert Miller. He was the lucky dog recipient. He's been slowly working his way through the grid, currently P15. So it's taken him uh, a little while, but he's cracked the top 15, trying to charge towards the top 10, currently seven seconds behind our leader. And I'll tell you what, this is not a track where it is easy to work through traffic. Uh, obviously, we've seen a lot of, oh, a little bit of smoke on the back straight away, but we have seen a lot of side-by-side -side racing so far tonight. And uh, when these guys get side-by-side -side and they start battling, if you're behind them, I mean, we got no choice. You just got to ride. There's nothing you can really do to try to make that pass. And so you're kind of at the mercy of the competition, which is never too fun. But look at that deep dive by the number zero, too. That was Padgett. a very close call. I said Padgett, one of those guys who likes to play the lottery. So luckily did avoid contact there. But the aggressive moves on these tracks where it's a little bit harder to pass, sometimes that's just kind of how you have to play the game here. So... Uh, so far, did not have any issues, so good news there. And as we do come to three to go for you fans of the 13, Wayne Grassy, 18 and a half, 19 seconds back, and about 24 second lap times right now. So I think he should be okay um, in that capacity. But Delaney up by two and a third seconds. So once he got the lead, he just turned the he turned the turbo shit on. He has the superstar. He has the golden mushroom. Uh, whatever analogy of go fast you want to use, currently engaged right now for Delaney here, going back a little bit. Uh, Dustin Hall had a little bit of a wiggle, with Schofield having a wiggle. And yeah, they both got sideways right in front of Robert, and that is pretty scary as a driver when both the drivers in front of you are suddenly a little bit out of control. But uh, again, uh, the stage is going to complete at the completion of lap 70, I believe. So. Uh, these guys know that there is some points on the line if they could get up to the top 10. Now, these guys are from 12th on back, so I don't think they're quite going to be able to get there in time. But you never know. Got to get aggressive with it. There is 10th place. Uh, the number four, Matt Dicciani, he's going to be the last driver if they uh, finish where they are to grab some points. And they do cross the line. The stage caution should be coming out once John Delaney and the nine other drivers in that train cross to complete lap 70. And he is very close to putting some more cars a lap down. So that was almost bad news for your team there, Cody, in the number 13. But luckily, um, that caution is going to come out. Saved by the bell. Susan's going to get back on the lead lap. And here comes the rest of the class. Number four, grabbing himself a stage point. Yeah, yeah, that's huge for Matt DiCiani and Jeffrey Souza, both lucking out there with an extra point and getting one of the laps back because uh, if he would have rode a lap down all race i would have uh, definitely had some uh, words about putting my car that lap many laps down well, andre well you being in the booth tonight I, I i would hope you have words otherwise you would not be of much use to us 
Yeah, I, you know, I'll, I'll stumble on my words a few <laughs> times, but hey, we're, hey, we're having fun up I'm here. I'm the lead commentator, and I do everything on this channel, and I still can't talk half the time, so you're fine. But uh, Pace Car is going to open the pits as uh, everyone gets up and sorted, so the majority of the field is on their original set of tires. So, so they will come down to the attention of their crew. Seven sets on the wall, so the six sets for the remainder. You can see on the racetrack, the only one staying on the track is the one that is going to get that uh, insert sponsor here free pass. There goes Souza to do so, and uh, we'll see who gets the race off of pit road. If I can find a camera, that is not terrible. It's a bit of a convoluted pit road here at Richmond. You see it curves just at the very end, and can make spotting your pit stall fairly difficult. Robert Miller has the advantage of having that final pit stall so he doesn't have to worry about getting back out onto pit road. He can just gas it out, but John Delaney, no contest there. He is two car lengths, clearly the winner off of pit road with uh, looks like Patrick Getter P2, Alex Murray third. So really not a whole lot changing. And now Souza and the number 69 of Ho uh, Hogan should be able to come down pit road, get those cars serviced, but when you are the car that is pitting uh, after all the leaders one lap later, you gotta be careful at a track like Richmond. You gotta make sure that service time isn't too long because it's very possible you might not beat the pace car back out. Yeah, and all these tracks coming up here, Richmond, Bristol, and Martinsville, you, you do have to be careful of that because I've been one of those people that have gone a lap down at Martinsville, uh, being at the tail of the field just because it takes too long. Um, but it will be interesting to see what happens here and if anybody will lose an extra lap because of it. Yeah, Cody, I'll have to ask you, of course, as the drivers, because you participate in both Fridays and Saturdays, um, what are you looking forward to next week? Because, of course, the Bristol team is going to have a lot of work to do. Saturday, Friday night, we're going to be on the dirt, and they're going to have to get that whole half mile cleaned and prepared for a concrete race next week for the big boys on saturday so which of the two races if any are you looking forward to running and well are you going to be running in both of them well i i think bristol dirt is the greatest track ever invented um i'm only saying that because it fires up andre but bristol dirt is one of my favorite tracks i love racing yeah so i have uh, admin permissions and so i just removed cody from the booth <laughs> uh, um because we don't accept that kind of talk here uh, we uh, don't, this is we don't this we don't is the, let that happen. This is where I would love this to be team speak for us, those who, you know, us old people who used to live in the MySpace era that use team speak, because it would say, user has been moved from your channel. And it would be, it had a <laughs> lot more effect when you someone would do something like that. Ha. Huh. But yes, no. So it, it's Brist, Bristol ass or uh, concrete is one of Bristol the. Bristol what? <laughs> Bristol Concrete. Um, I'm going to hear about that after the race from Canada. I mean, maybe you were just um, talking to them about the 1992 version of it. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's what I was talking about. But Bristol Concrete is one of my better tracks as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to both of them, and I think each one's going to present its own separate challenge. And I did not enjoy being moved. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I think... uh, well, you know, uh, maybe next time just think before you speak. We do not allow praise for Dirt Bristol uh, in this channel, and, and I think you should have known better, Cody. Yeah, I think uh, Dirt Bristol is actually going to bring out a big field for Division 2, just of guys that, unlike Andre, do like the place. Or at least they like dirt, and they know that's all we got, so take it, take it for what it is. It's not Eldor, it's all we got. So whatever that is, that's next week, but this week is now, because that's what this is. Green flag in the air, Delaney gets the jump. Get her out sleeping there. And Murray to his inside. We'll make sure the restart gods uh, allow that restart to happen legally here. But Delaney's... Guys, this is going to be a long night. Delaney gets the lead off the whole shot. He pulled away by two and a half seconds. He has clean air. This might be a Delaney doing Delaney things type evening. Yeah, and the thing with Jonathan Delaney is I believe he just set the career win mark in 100% at 26 uh, wins. So he, we always seem to have one driver that falls off after having such a dominant year. But John Delaney looks like he wants to be the first back-to-back -back champion of this league. And you look for, even in the real world, look at Kyle Larson, you know, 2021, wins 10 races and realistically could have won two or three more. I mean, I always remember the Pocono race where he blew a tire on the final lap. He dominated Indy Road. and. NASCAR road racing took that away from him, being how that likes to be. So he could have realistically won 13, 14 races that year. But then 
2022 happens and he just kind of becomes a normie for the most part if uh, I think that's a hip word these days maybe maybe not but he just became average you know still won a few races but wasn't the same and I think that's kind of what you're alluding to Cody where you just kind of you dominate and then you have that fall off or you just go Jeff Gordon 1990s or Jimmy Johnson mid 2000s and just completely just rip him off and just kill the field week after week yeah and that Jerry's probably seen it too, but it was 2020 Cam dominated towards the end of that year. 2021, uh, Adam Benefield, who had a normal year last year, and John Delaney's reversing that trend. Yeah, trying to double down, but uh, that's kind of the way it goes. You know, some drivers are just going to be prone to have those championship hangovers, and uh, especially when you have the field changing and evolving as the league progresses, we just get. So many new faces and, and so many drivers that are of high I rating. The competition gets tougher and tougher. But with John in particular, I think even you know back in 2020, even back in the days of Galaxy, we knew that he was going to be good. I mean, he was fast, and that was evident. But back then, his biggest problem was consistency, and he was very rash. He didn't really think things through. He wasn't much of a uh, A leads to B leads to C kind of thinker. It was just I want to go fast and I want to lead this race, and that that doesn't always work out for the best and so we kind of knew once he you know gets a little bit older and starts racing a little bit more and gets that figured out and he gets a little bit of a calm head on his shoulders he's going to be a threat every single week and well that's pretty much what happened you know john he still makes a mistake every now and again uh, like everybody does on track but for the most part i think he's moved past that rash john that we used to know and ever since then uh, he's just been racking up the wins and he has not looked back yeah, that's just kind of an asterisk I want to give as well. We were talking about the rookie standings earlier. And you think of rookie in the real world context, it's somebody who maybe just is getting promoted from Xfinity or someone who just ran ARCA and they're going into trucks like they're a first time they're new. A rookie to 100% is just a rookie to the series. They are in no sense a rookie to the iRacing service. So they could be, you know, going R to P. They could be, a co I mean, you could have Ray Alfala join this series, and he would be a rookie because he's a rookie to the league. He's not a rookie to iRacing. So you'll see a guy like Patrick Gitter. I don't know his exact I rating. I may be able to figure it out here. Uh, he's a 6,000 I rating, but he's a rookie to the league. He's not a rookie to the service. So I always have to remember that, that when a rookie comes out here and dominates, it's not because he's up and learning. He's learning the rules of, these, of the series, and he's learning the guys that he's driving with. Yeah, and a big thing with racing and why there has been a kind of influx of caution in the league, it's because these guys don't race with people with such high hiring. Um, it's tough for guys like me, uh, just above a 2,000. But learning how each driver drives is important. I'm scrolling down here on my uh, my back end data. I don't have a way to show it live, but I think the lowest I rating in this race, uh, 2237, I want to say, and that is Kevin Steele. And, of course, your I rating, not a full indicative because you have drivers that haven't run an official race in 10 years. They strictly just do leagues and, and hosted, so their I rating is useless because they're not putting themselves in that matchmaking service to get that number, so... A lot of different kind of variations to what makes a driver and how they get categorized here in the league. But moral of the story, everybody in here is, a, for the most part, a respected driver and uh, has that skill, has earned the respect and the cleanliness to get the certification from admin to get their uh, okay to run in the series here. But lap number 90 on the board. You can see Hutchison to the inside of Van Sant here. Hutchison all the way back there in 23rd, so not really having the run that he desires and that number eight trying to go two for one here perhaps on sean o'brien in the 24 uh, other than that not too much going on in the front of the pack everybody pretty well it's pretty well strung out and to kind of add on to you guys' point about the strength of field here i think it's really only natural that a lead that runs races of this nature would attract drivers that are just a little bit more serious about sim racing and and thus you know they put in the track time they they practice a lot and they for a lack of better words get good uh running a full length race every single weekend in addition to all of the practice and time that you put in building the setup for said race is kind of like a second job right this isn't something that you can do casually if you're somebody who is working overtime you got a 50 hour work week and you know sim racing is just something you do casually it's going to be tough 
to to compete in a league that, that's running these kinds of settings and so he does attract these kind of drivers and uh, it, it is it's kind of unique in a sense uh, you know on iRacing other than the coke series you don't often see an amalgamation of drivers amalgamation whatever the word may be uh, that is so highly skilled and so just tightly packed in terms of iRacing yeah and it, it, it's developed each and each more every year it keeps changing uh, i believe when the league started it was about a 2100 i rating and it, it's just continued to grow to where it is now it just grows and grows and you know turning away people at the door i kind of call it the no life tribe because you're here all day saturday a lot of people are here all night friday you're putting in the week the practice in midweek but I'm also in the No Life Tribe because I'm here covering these races both Friday and Saturday. It's dedication. Um, of course, we're coming into the summer months here, so we'll see how that does come off. And a lot of people will uh, kind of make some schedule changes. But it takes commitment. takes uh, takes a lot of skill and patience to get to be a good driver in the series. And, uh, again, this is the kind of racing we like to see. Everybody, we're on a driver's track. And if we look at the schedule, guys, or uh, retroactively look at where we've raced this season, Daytona, is a wash auto club at least on the i racing service it's not that tough vegas pretty easy a little slick but not too bad i'm gonna say other than coda which is an anomaly as a road course this is probably the first driver's track oval uh we've had on the schedule this season and i think it's definitely showing that yeah definitely and with a driver's track comes having the talent especially i forget if they updated the package to have the not lower yet. down force but either way these these cars are not easy to drive and for somebody like a normal casual daytona and atlanta talladega are a bit are the best chances but here it just goes to show who the good drivers are it's a great thing that we are building out Adam Benefield's dashboard. Don't want to give away too many of the golfer's secrets. And we got to make sure we keep that information confidential. But yeah, and, and you know, this really is a driver's track, and there's only more of them coming up in the schedule. You kind of mentioned it earlier, Cody, and you made a good point. The next string of tracks is, oh, well, it's tough. You know, you got uh, concrete Bristol for 100%. You've got that Dirt Bristol for D2. Then after that, you've got Martinsville, which is not exactly an easy race track. And you've got 40 cars packed into the paper clip. And then after that, you got, uh, I believe, Talladega, uh, which is not necessarily a tough track to drive, but definitely a tough track to survive at. So uh, April is, well, it's a good month for stock racing. Yeah, and even starting off in May with Dover, and then I believe Darlington, th this is arguably the best block of races minus probably the last three uh as long as we replace phoenix with homestead yeah i forgot about phoenix but i'm not even going to call phoenix a driver's track especially with the dog leg and it still is rather gripped up this is definitely exponentially slicker than of course after that race uh at dover we head into the most fame the most prestigious and most look forward to race in the real world probably not so much in the sim world but the North Wilkesboro All-Star Race. It's getting closer and closer, about a month and a half away. And if you've looked at those pictures on Twitter, it is amazing what they've done with that old girl to get it up and going in one year's time. So I don't know where the All-Star Race is here in the series. I'd imagine it is there. And I just wish that iRacing would give us a modern variation of it. I understand why they did the 1987 version for the release of the 87 cars, but it would be really nice to get that up-to-date version of Wilkesboro. Maybe it is a hashtag soon moment there, but... Lap 100 uh, has elapsed, so we are tw past 25% distance here, past the... Oh, God, I just was about to do miles on three-quarter. I'm not even going to try to do the miles, but we're 25% distance in. Delaney has not pulled away this time by, as he is uh, about to lap. I think Boyd Hogan, Hogan, uh, Hogan, Toboggan, whatever you want to call him there, 37th. He's one lap down, about to go two. Uh, but he's not pulling away. Gitter in second staying with him for the time being but it was around the 50 lap mark that the lady turned on the turbo jets last time all right so i i just got an amusing update uh, not that i would ever be amused by somebody else's misfortune um i i okay i would i would be amused by somebody's misfortune uh, dalton modley 
put in a Discord channel that the reason he has taken the car behind the garage is he came down pit road and for some reason his car would not take tires or fuel. So I'm left to believe that his pit crew was off eating ice cream somewhere. They gave up very early into this event and Dalton threw his hands up said, well now I'm two laps down, I don't have tires, I'd have to pit again. Uh, we're calling it quits. So the 77 off track, uh, I don't know where his pit crew went, if anybody has seen them. Uh, let Dalton know, I hear he's looking for them. Uh, they may have left the premises. Uh, I would check the local Applebee's, we might have went for dinner, I don't know. Maybe a cookout? Um, yeah, could be. I mean, we are, yeah, we're in, yeah, we're in Richmond. I only, yeah, know, um, I only know cookout because I saw an ad for it, but... In, in the, you know, joking aside, there's a there's a term for that in the video game slash simulation world. There's a term for that. It's called a rage quit. Well, yeah, I mean, only if he was angry. Uh, you know, there are times where you need to say, okay, well, that's unfortunate. There's, and then you get yeah. <laughs> there's a, this is pointless. I'm going to do something else quit, but... It's still within the rage quit family. It's kind of yeah, like the it's kind of like the the step cousin. Tangentially related, like you can't like the two couldn't have kids. We'll put it that way. That, that is a fifty yeah. cent word, sir. Tan. What was that? Tangentially. Tangentially. <laughs> tangentially. When you go to the beach, but don't don't tan roughly. Tangentially. Oh. Sometimes, sometimes I, I just pull out words that only like eighty year old people use. I, I know one time I said machinations, and Demaris has not let me live that down in the last two and a half years. He's like, who says machinations? I mean, do you say oh. catch up? Do you say cats up and do you go to the cinema? No, 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 no. Machinations is not mechanism. It's, it's a word. It's like uh, when there's like schemes behind the scenes that are kind of like hidden. Um, you can say there's greater machinations at play. Uh, when there's, there's you know, forces in effect that you can't quite feel out. But there is a oh, caution. Oh, smoky. There are machinations at play on the track as the number Wayne, three. Wayne is in the grassy right there on the front straightaway. All right, that one was pretty good. I'll give you credit on that one. <laughs> that was good. What that about Andre? Good. Do I get credit from Andre? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll give you credit for that, <laughs> that one. We'll, we'll give All you right, that my one. credit limit has been raised from zero to $10. Can't even buy a combo of Wendy's for that. Oh, he got a wiggle, he got a wiggle, he's got a wiggle. 50, Cam oh. Stone made it a waggle. Very impressive mean. backwards driving there on the front. He would, that was very impressive straight backwards driving. Uh, driving right through the Xfinity logo because everybody hates Xfinity except NASCAR because they're paying them. Um, it looks, actually Dylan Kritz is in the 57 this week for Cam Stone. Oh, well that explains everything then. The machinations at play are just innumerable. There were so many syllables in that sentence that it was a <laughs> lot of syllables. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, when you don't have a second half of the joke, just say the literal statement. So, pit road is going to be a busy place. It will... Uh, I don't see anybody staying on the track. Oh, I think that may be Mobley. Uh, no, it's not him. Is it, Ho is it Hogan? Hogan, 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 Toboggan. He's going to get his lap back there, get back on the free pass. So I believe that is going to put Boyd one lap down as opposed to two. So now he is uh, in contention to actually get the lucky dog oh. and uh, potentially oh, get back whoa. up. Oh, and uh, Miller overshot his dog. And I, I do want to give a, one little asterisk here. So... What's your name? Andre. <laughs> he, you messaged me earlier, and you said you got pretty much a responsibility from Kevin Steele, one of the admins here, to, uh, we'll just generically say, be very entertaining with your commentary. So if we need to be professional and we need to say, we can do our best. I'm not going to say we're going to go be, uh, you know, Alan Bestwick or Lee Diffie, but when we need to be professional, we can. But if League Admin tells us, have fun and just be loose. That's how we're gonna call the race, guys. We're we're three guys potentially having beer or different drinks and snacks, just having fun and uh, watching some pixel cars go around the track with you guys. So th this isn't just us. This is us doing what the admins wanted us to do. I think, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely. Uh, <laughs> it it kind of depends. I, I find league to league, you know, how I approach commentating, like. 
obviously SSRL, I tend to take a little bit more seriously. And I know the Stay Tuned Sports Podcast truck series that I, I commentate on Fridays, I tend to take a little bit more seriously because that's the vibe they want. Um, but, you know, here at 100%, uh, Kevin literally said, uh, he said in Discord at like 4 o'clock today, I said, well, okay. <laughs> did, he, did he say that in the our, like our broadcaster Discord? Or did he no, actually he said say that, that in his Discord? Oh, Adam Benefield like in our chat right now. So driving and texting at the same time. Benefield, uh, who is the cop car in the league? Because pull over in the number 83 for distracted driving. And I know yeah, he's listening uh, too. Yeah, he's he has more ability in one arm than I do in my whole body. So I trust him to be texting and driving while out on the track. And something we may have missed um, was Patrick Gitter got the lead off pit road. Um, getting so, her done. Yes, getting her done. So this is going to be interesting to see how John approaches this restart, especially with it being so tight. And it looks like we're going back to green here, and we're off going down the front stretch. Yeah, I was That's a little bit behind really there on the replay mode. Luckily, I was able to catch it there. So when we get distracted, I forget to produce the race. So got to make sure I at least covered the first responsibility that I have here. But Gitter got a huge jump there. Delaney's going to go back in the dirty air, fall back to second. He's going to try to make that outside work on Alex Murray. Will fall back in line. Doesn't want Hoitzma or Giglio to uh, fill in the gap there as the two teammates will go side by side for the fourth and fifth spot, respectively. Benefield back there in sixth. And Neil Pearson still having a fabulous run there. Uh, seventh, maybe uh, eighth spot. He's going to have to try to fight for that position. That one thing I've not seen a lot of tonight, I've only seen a couple cars really fall victim to it, but that outside wall coming out of turn two, uh, I know that uh, on older tire models, it was not uncommon for a car to get tight and slap that wall come out of the corner once that banking uh, went away and was unable to help them through the turn. But it seems like the cars are so loose with this tire model that uh, being tight is not the issue. So a lot of these guys being spared that uh, very common mistake of hitting that outside wall. But we'll have to wait and see. You know, the track conditions could definitely change. I think as more rubber gets laid down, the looseness is going to go away just a little bit. And I would imagine as the night progresses, the temps should continue to go down, but at least by a few degrees. So we'll see uh, exactly what is going on there. But this train of cars right here, Robert Miller, uh, Lucas Hoyt, and Blake Giglio all together four through six and Jonathan Delaney currently sitting third he's got a little bit of work to do uh we obviously know that that number six is fast and here's what's interesting and, and this is what tells me how tough it is to pass at this track guys when John got the lead he drove away to the biggest advantage we've seen anybody have he was three seconds ahead at the end of stage one but when he's behind these guys it takes him upwards of 20 laps to secure these passes it's it's tough. I, mean, I don't know if it just comes down to dirty air or if the track is just kind of that way. I mean, I think it's just a, it's akin to both the dirty air. It's akin to difficult track conditions. Cars that aren't, you know, even a good handling car is still going to be hard to drive. And then it is kind of akin to this basically singular groove track here that we do have at Richmond that iRacing is presenting to us. You really can't do what they're going to be doing in real life and going up to the third lane and trying to find different ways to get grip getting those runs off we're pretty much planted to the yellow line so and uh also akin to the fact that these these lap times are so similar through the whole field so if everyone is running within a half tenth of each other and you have dirty air and the car is hard to drive i mean just none of those things facilitate uh an easy pass yeah no and with this track being the way it currently Ooh, Hutchison is. Hutchison and oh. Ammon, Amun. Oh, they're they're going to door bay. Oh, Amun oh. into a wall. And we got to wrap oh, up the back stretch. Oh, that's Car a parking lot. It was not. They're going. Wow. But the caution flag did come out. I want to say Kremborg. Yeah, Kremborg, I want to say, was involved in it in some capacity. Oh, yep, yeah, it certainly was. I believe Kevin Steele may have also been involved, at least maybe uh, in something after the incident or in the initial accident, but a little bit of a spatial awareness issue. Uh, Van de Sand on the outside just kind of minding his own business, and then what was it? Uh, there comes the 23. Oh, that was it. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy there. 
uh, back to live footage. And Now, I think just on the corner of the screen, I should note, uh, we saw the number seven. I think he might have got rear-ended a little bit trying to slow up for that wreck because he did ask over the radio if he had damage. I don't see any, uh, but he did ask, so that tells me he probably took a, a bit of a beat being there. We go on board with the 13 machine trying to scope out this number seven. I don't know, guys. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, it looks straight. Um, I think Kevin's also having nightmares with the 13 right behind him. Um, so that's why he's kind of high. He thinks I'm in the car. Um, but yeah, no, that rear bumper looks pretty straight. I, I, I'm still a, a four-year-old when it comes to my Telestrator abilities, but I am proud of the fact that I have it. So we'll have some fun with that as we've already had. And there are rare times where it actually is highly useful. Um, haven't had that yet, but... I'm sure it'll happen at some point, and I will be very well prepared for that. Oh. So, oh. Okay, I see what happened now. Do you? Uh, Cody, Cody, you rear-ended him, man. Oh, no. <laughs> he checked up for the wreck, and you just came in full bore. Yeah. Um, I, I am I, surprised I, Kevin doesn't have damage from that. You, honestly, Cody, you, you should send him an apology letter right now. Um, um, yeah, I'll get that typed up and sent over to him. See, it's, it, look at on screen. It's Cody Bird. You caused that wreck. Yeah, the, the words don't lie. So my question is, do I get at, at fault for that incident now for the year? Because we're doing great. <laughs> um, yeah, your, your blood is in the car. Your, your empty bag of Cheez-Its from last week. Perhaps a little bit of human excrement still in the car from the last time you crashed. So that is your car that... Sousa has ingrained himself. Actually, that's pretty disgusting, Corey. I'll tell you what, I'll use Corey's favorite word. I'll say, Cody, that you are tangentially related to that incident, so you get half and half that fault. Okay. You know, I can live with that. This was the only clean car in the stint analyzer shop, so it's no surprise that uh, we really didn't have very many options. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. But let's just uh, get a scope of what we have going on here. So pit stops were not a thing on that caution. So just going through the stint, speaking of stints, stint graphic, the first driver to take uh, any effort into pit road was Van de Sand, which is not a surprise because uh, he was in one of those cautions and was it the last, was it this past? I don't even remember, but he was just in something. So we should probably double checking uh, that that number 96 Ford Mustang is in good condition so everybody up front still going to be on about 18 20 lap all tires and getter will be the control car and the sun just th throwing fits with these guys today it was it's been in and out all day and track temp going down to 97 degrees so a little bit more grip on offer as um i don't know if one of you guys can tell me the virtual standard time that we currently are racing in but the track should cool down more as the, the race continues as we get ready for a restart so the in incident time right now is about 4.38. So uh, if I'm reading military time correctly. So yeah, the sun will continue to go down. I believe the track temp should go down a little bit. We're definitely not racing into the sunset or in the evening by any means. Uh, I believe we are in the real life month of April here in Sim. So sunset wouldn't be till about 7.30, which boy oh boy, if this race goes to sunset, we've got major problems uh, and the booth will have probably packed oh, up enough by then. <laughs> But we're going to have uh, nighttime shadows turning on about 5.30, and then my computer is going to go potato. So that'll always be fun. Got the LFI racing optimization here. But good battle going on. Uh, basically, the latter end of the top 10, Neil Pearson talked about it many a time. And he's in that eighth spot to the outside of RJ Root, who kind of has stalled out uh, in that ninth or so position as Root Root there. Started 19th in the ninth spot. Again, uh, the double names there is just kind of a how the overlay software oh. reads the names here and uh, into the wall there. Mark Padgett, I believe that, was that Padgett or Dyson? I think that was Dyson and Padgett. I think we both, both got a piece of it. So that is uh, not a good thing here. Got to have that spatial awareness, but it does get pretty tight quarters racing on the exit of the quarters. Back to Siani, talked about him, started 17th, upwards uh, kind of fighting there on the edge of the top 10. So good battle going on there, but uh, at least this three star, this is akin to what Delaney was doing late in the first main stint of the race. Look at him pulling out to a second over Delaney. You know, this is a couple heat cycles in, guys. These heat cycles definitely can change the handling characteristics of the machines here. And 
Sometimes you get that perfect heat cycle and that thing is gone. Well, here's that may be uh, what Gitter is dealing with right now. Yeah, and the thing with John is, we always mention John doing John things of going to the front. He's probably one of the better drivers on the service who can save tires. It'll be 100 laps into a run sometimes, and you'll see him coming up and just blow by you. Yeah, definitely uh, true of John, and we'll have to wait and see if that long run speed does kick in. I'm curious to see if we get another long run, because the caution distribution has been a little bit strange, to say the least. We had uh, a number of cautions right at the beginning of the race, and then from lap 27 until just then, on lap 121, 122, right about there, uh, we had no cautions for cause, just one caution for a stage. So we had quite a bit of green flag racing from lap 27 up until this last caution. Uh, but before that, it was a flurry of caution, which kind of is how Richmond goes. Sometimes you get long green flag runs, and then sometimes cautions breed cautions. But luckily this time, I think these guys were able to get sorted out pretty quickly. They were single file, probably due to the older tires. Uh, you know, these guys aren't exactly on freshies, so I think they know that they're not exactly going to be able to make the boldest of moves and have the car stick. So they're kind of forced, uh, in a way, to take it easy and, and just kind of line up single file, which means, hey, we get to stay green flag racing, but not everybody's going single file. Look at this, we got a pass for position. Uh, that is Ralph Hutchison taking a spot just right behind Dustin Hall. So another car up on his radar to try to overtake but they're still side by side behind him and you know Cody you mentioned the outside lanes seem to be better than expected and I think you're right I I'm watching a lot of these guys maybe not make overtakes on the outside but as far as defending your position it seems like the outside is is definitely an option which I didn't expect going in yeah and the thing with the outside lane is you, you have to be able to save your tires to get this run and in the long run, with you battling side by side with somebody, you're wearing out their tires quicker, so it may set up a pass uh, five laps down the road. Up here on the drone cam, and I did notice, uh, I'll try to see if we can get a shot of it that is height of bit rate. There you can see up there, marbles starting to form, and I saw a ton of marbles to the inside of turn four. Uh, that camera's not going to show it. You can see up on the bottom of the racetrack there a little bit, and we'll, we'll kind of point it out. But getting offline too far is going to become more and more treacherous here. And, you know, we don't have the virtual uh, safety clean trucks here that are sweeping this track in between cautions. So there's a lot of marbles now, and we're still 260 laps to go. So this track, especially getting offline, is going to be a little bit treacherous and a little bit slick uh, as more and more laps. Uh, of all these cars, and a lack there of attrition at that matter uh, keeps uh, changing this track conditions. Yeah, and throughout the it's starting to see kind of comers and goers in a sense. Um, it seems like from 10 to 20 and 20 to 30 keep going back and forth with one another. Um, so it's hard. I don't know where I was going with that. It's hard, Anybody comers and goers. Maybe you were talking about making passes and going offline and getting the, the dirty stuff. Uh, I, the comers and goers are a thing. You know, that, that's a good point, especially on these driver's tracks. You know, tire wear guys, early run guys, late run guys. So, kind of pick up the pieces on that thought. It was a good point, even if it de derailed. Yeah, I don't know what I was trying to say. I should also point out, I am incredibly juvenile because it took every ounce of my willpower i'm talking every fiber of my being not to drop in ao when I mean, you're talking about comers and goers it's, it's hard I'm... ah <laughs> no. so what you're saying is if guys you know tr they get a little optimistic and tr try sticking it into a tiny hole ao <laughs> <laughs> I think we need the FA, and I think we're getting you need a little, uh, you know, these as, uh, these guys getting slippy, slidey, and loose off the corners here. Reminds you of a strip in Las Vegas corner. Yep, oh this has gone off the rails. You know, I, I feel like look, the they asked for a loose broadcast. A loose? They asked for a loose broadcast, Andre. You just said it yourself. They're, they're probably not gonna repeat the request. 
But you know what? While we're here, let's have fun with it. Wow. Uh, TVMA, uh, you know, we're up there with the Walking Dead in terms of ratings. But uh, look at this battle going on right here. So Caution! Robert, oh, no! The number 57. Now, he I, was the Lucky Dog recipient, but he will be ineligible. Captain if he Kurtz. Was to be the cause. So let's see if he was the cause of this caution or if he was reasonably deemed to be the cause. He was outside of Randy Drumhiller in the 44. Looks like he just got a little bit loose and Randy came up a little bit there and two cars just going for the same real estate. Now, luckily, Chris may still be able to claim the lucky dog because the 44, I believe, would be the cause of this caution as far as iRacing is concerned. Um, uh, it looks as though, I mean, if we... Just look at it one more time. It was a little net code, but it looked more as though that Drumhiller inched up the track and yeah, I just lost my remaining sentence there. So, yeah. Well, it's happening a lot tonight. I feel like... I'm sorry, I'm bringing that video up here. We're not even halfway through this. We're only 140 set. We still have over 50% of this race to go and words are... I mean, you, for it. you lose your train of thought, just hit him with the machinations. All right. Doesn't matter if it works. Doesn't matter if it actually means anything within the context of the sentence. Just hit him with it. It's good enough. What is what is tone back to the uh, the John Madden school of broadcasting? Precisely. If if you drive the car and, and you pass all the other cars, then you're then, in the lead. Then you're in the lead. But but and if you, but said, if you hit the wall and you, you know you you know you know, get, get the car all crumpled up then you, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Look, I said it, I think, three weeks ago, and I'll say it again. If you want to win the race, you you got to be in the lead. So, uh, I mean, it's very important. Uh, you got to keep that in mind. Patrick Getter, speaking of winning the race and being in the lead, uh, we're just going to flip that switch, get back to serious mode. So Patrick Getter, he was able to hold off the number six machine of John Delaney throughout that entire run. But John came down pit road. He took tires alongside a few others. Everybody else up front, uh, I would say, from about first back to eh, 15th, give or take, did not take tires. So this is going to be interesting. We know passing is difficult. Uh, we've seen how long it can take to set somebody up for an overtake and to make that move work properly. But now we've got a lot of drivers that have fresh tires, but they've got a lot of cars to pass because there are a ton of cars that didn't pit. Question is, guys, can they race their way through the field and get that track position back using those fresh tires before those tires go through too many heat cycles, yes. before they heat them up too much? Yes. Do you do you think they can? Yes. All right. So and I it's say that I say that just from watching last night's race, 20, 25 laps on the tires, you were basically Mario Kart turbo pad uh, in relation to the field. and. Uh, we saw Neil Pearson last night. D he did exactly that. He drove with a car that we, you know, we've seen Pearson have a great run. He has probably a eighth to tenth place car here tonight, but just, just annihilated the field and led by almost five seconds and should have won the race. I wouldn't be surprised if Adam Benefield nails on the trophy, to be honest, after last night. But uh, definitely think that those fresh tires. Uh, seeing as we got 38 laps, we'll pull up the stint graphic for our race leader. 38 laps. So. Uh, if you are on freshies right now, you got to be patient as somebody has stopped. Someone is pulling off their uh, Josh Williams impression. That's Damaris Sickenbottom. Can he pull himself into the trailer for a, a three-hour kind of uh, yelling at? I mean, I um, can see it. He could talk to himself for three hours, <laughs> but I would, I would suggest schizophrenia medications if he did. And we'll just we'll put that out there. Also, I want to point out, uh, it only took 149 laps, uh, but Boyd Hogan is back on the lead lap. Uh, he was able to get the lucky dog. Is it, is it Hogan? Are oh, we still Hogan. guessing? Um, okay, so it's not Hogan uh, and Hogan. Uh, and if it's not, then womp womp, too bad, boy. Uh, 69 car is currently sitting 34, so he is the last car on the lead lap uh, after tomorrow's goes. Oh, one. big wiggle. That was, uh, who was that on the outside? That was actually one of your guys. That was Giglio on the 16. Huge wheel spin there. It really stacked up the outside lane um, as they all come two by two off of corner number two. And we'll have to be watching in the rear view 
uh, for that purple, yellow, and white car. That is Miller, and I thought he was going to try to go three wide to the top there, but uh, not going to be able to do so. Delaney's going to try to split him three wide and thinks better. No, he doesn't think better of it. He goes for it, uh, potentially. You got three very fast cars right there. John Delaney, Alex Murray, Robert Miller, oh. the 59. This is not a fun situation to be in. If you are the 59, you got cars splitting you down the middle. They got pressure tires. All you can do is try to hold your lane. And unfortunately, Chad Sander is going to get stuck three wide even further back. He's not able to sort out into a single file or even a double file. Uh, things absolutely chaotic. Caution. Towards the table. Well, then yellow flag that flies was, on uh, That was Sander. Sander not be hanging the banner here tonight. Well, just a little small spin, but uh, let's go see. We saw him be in quite the kerfuffle, and he got kerf he got royally kerfuffled by uh, by Hall there. Yeah, that was just looks like people on fresh tires versus people on old tires. That type of incident. It's tough when you know you have a fast car, you get stuck behind somebody that's slower um, to make the pass. And as you can see here, just came off the corner at a different time than him. Yeah, luckily that happened on the trialable where he had a little bit of runoff to kind of slide down to and I don't think that contact was quite enough to uh, wound his car any so Sander should be able to get back out on track and get back in the game as there are only two cars uh, on the lap there but we are going to go side by side uh, and we will be back for the drop the green. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. And we're back here after a brief side-by-side, -side, and I am well aware that my uh, under-caution side-by-side ticker, uh, not in functioning order, but we'll get that fixed for the next one. But we are ready for a restart here. Remember, we still have fresh tires. Our uh, Miller, I think, back there in the 14th, 15th spot. 
Uh, I think he's the highest one on fresh tires. Nope, take that back. That's Benefield on 11. So here we come. Green flag in the air. Let's get going one more time. Back to get her out to a familiar position. He is in the lead. He's going to go side by side. Teammates behind him. RJ Root up in the fourth. You mentioned that Root kind of stalled out in that ninth position. Well, uh, through all this strategy and the cautions kind of jumbling everything up, he's gained a little bit of track position. We'll see if he can maintain it or even gain a little bit more, possibly. Yeah, Matt Luciani, another car that's gained quite a few positions uh, through all of this. He's currently running fifth. And then behind Luciani, that's where things get a little bit crazy because they are pretty much two by two all the way to the tail end of the field uh, with not much exception anywhere. And maybe a little bit of three wide. Oh, no, number eight, Ralph Hutchison. Sliding through the infield, back up the track. Somehow parts the Red Seas. John Delaney involved. Caution comes out. How did how how did he not hit anybody? Yeah, that is uh that was a sight to see here. Let's go back on replay. Uh, it didn't end up being catastrophic, but it was definitely something to to witness. So I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger. Replay on screen. You can see that's Anderson to the inside. Anderson full send mode there. He's sideways, he's sideways, and it gathered back up, and they're about four or five wide. Uh, nearly some contact there between James and five, but yeah. Uh, Bobby Anderson was on his send it shoes there, and luckily it was not any worse than it could have been. Yeah, that was, that was single-handedly, I think, the most impressive thing I've seen at Richmond uh, in a few years. Not only just the fact that Ralph saved that thing, but that the number five had the awareness that he was going to slide back up the track, and he did check up for him, and everybody behind them saw it happening as well, and they checked up accordingly without hitting each other. That is not a common occurrence at a short track, so bravo to everybody involved in that. Yeah, when I saw him going spinning, I thought for sure we were about to have a parking lot. Um, maybe we could have found Dalton's crew in there, but it looks like uh, everybody <laughs> kept it rolling. Um, during during our short break, I did have a chance to catch up with the pit crew of Dalton. And yes, Andre, you were correct. Uh, they went and got ice cream, uh, didn't think he would be pitting, and uh, wasn't back in time. Did they go to the local McDonald's and the ice cream machine was actually working? You mean they didn't give me my McFlurry because they were lazy? Uh, they were actually in the fan zone um, doing it. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you one thing. They didn't order it off DoorDash, that's for sure. Oh, my God, yes. For those who don't know, so last night, uh, Wendy's had a deal strictly on DoorDash where if you spent $12 and you bought a biggie bag, your order was free up to $30. So basically all you had to do was tip your driver. And it crashed all of DoorDash servers, so you couldn't order DoorDash. If you were a DoorDash driver, you couldn't deliver it. And then every Wendy's had like a hundred orders to make that were just literally sitting there and not getting picked up because somebody in marketing thought that was a good idea. Sir, this is a Wendy's. Yeah, I, I just, I feel like, I mean, what do you gain, right? Because usually when a company does a massive promotion like that where they're essentially giving away free things, yes, they're, they're giving up money in their product, but what they're getting in return is recognition. Uh, they're getting a lot of eyes on their brand in doing such a thing. And then later on, the, the people that uh, take note of that brand will become customers. So the money comes later down the line. You're kind of investing uh, in the advertisement side of things. But who doesn't know what a Wendy's is? In, in the United States, in the year of our Lord, 2023, if you can find me a, a person who does not know what a Wendy's is, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a free biggie bag. Ooh, I hope it's the double stack one. That's my favorite. But yeah, I, I don't quite under. I mean, I know Wendy's is big on social media, and we usually have a Wendy's car uh, in the race somewhere. Um, and I think we will next week. I think it's the Food Wars 400, 500 or something like that next week. So I may see a Wendy's car. But yeah, I know these fast food places are trying to fight with each other on social media, but you'd think they'd give a little bit of heads up if there's a lot of moving pieces involved. And this goes to anything in life. If you have an idea, and it requires the facilitation of others to execute that idea, you should probably let them know with enough notice to actually be prepared to succeed rather than just say, hey, we're doing this, uh, figure it out, okay, bye. That just goes to everything in life. I agree. Can't, can't have too many moving pieces at one time or else exactly have, what you, happened happened. If you have four tires moving on a car, if you uh, they go into a wall, right, Cody? Just for me. And well, just, I mean, if, you're, if you're Williams in the 80s, you can have six tires. 
Ooh, story I time. I don't, that I don't know that one, but here's, a, here's yet another green flag, and Gitter gets the whole shot. Nothing new, and looks like, uh, rather, Hoitzma is going to get the second position, and it's going to be an LMM second and third for the time being. RJ Root in fourth, and still waiting on our fresh tires. Benefiel is the highest on the fresh tires. He is there in the ninth slash tenth position. Delaney right to his rear, kind of boxed in there as a Hutchison to the inside of Murray. He's going to get put into the middle of a sandwich. Oh, that sandwich will lose a piece of bread there. They'll go too wide, heading off into turn one. Even with that spin, oh, and oh, never mind. I was going to say he held the straight car under him up until that point. It's a little bit of a wiggle, but I think that's to be expected, especially when we've had these cautions come out and to kind of put the tires through these heat cycles. They're going to do some weird things, and I think the car is going to snap out at you at weird times. And uh, obviously, I think the biggest thing there is just being prepared for it and being able to feel out what your car is doing. And a huge pile up on the back straightaway. This time, it's not a false alarm. There are many much cars involved in this one. Uh, Alexander Van Sant, the number 38, Brandon Pierce, the number three again, Wayne Grassy. He has been involved in quite a few things. The zero to two of Mark Paget. Uh, not a whole lot of damage or pieces parts lying on the track. Again, these cars are in tank mode, but let's take a look at the PTR TV replay. Let's go about exactly what ticked off this event. Keep your eye on the 04. I think it's going to start round about there, and it does. Mark Padgett with just a little bit of a bump to Van Descent sets off a chain of events, which could not be undone at that point. And, oh, uh, yeah. If you were there behind you them. Look at, uh, look at Kevin Steele. Kevin Consistency Steele. He is diving and bobbing and weaving through the field serpentine yeah look at uh, tanner marty there with the little slalom move serpentine of the race award going to those two yeah and uh all of uh star racing was involved in that so yep i, I don't think me even being out of the car is uh a factor anymore do we need to splash your car down with holy water cody i think so I, I, I haven't been to church in 20 years, so I think this is coming back to uh, bite me. Could be. I also want to point out, I was wrong about the six-tired car. Uh, it was not a Williams, and it was not the 80s, so this is why you don't ever listen to a word I say. Uh, it was Tyrell Racing Organization in Formula 1 in 1977. Uh, they built a car that had two rear wheels and four front wheels, uh, and it was massively overpowered, and I believe shortly made illegal, uh, like the very next year, roundabout. Uh, but it had, uh, no, it was not made illegal the next year. It ran in 76 with a five-speed transmission. It ran in 77 with a six-speed manual transmission. Uh, and then after 77, it was discontinued. Uh, it, uh, it got one win. It got 14 podiums, one pole. So a very successful car. But uh, obviously, if you got a car with six wheels, I think that goes against most uh most rules, maybe even rules that don't exist yet, rules will get made when you bring out a six-wheel car. Yeah, that's, uh, A, it's expensive, B, it's heavy, and C, well, well I guess the, the C out of it is if it works, it works, but, um, we haven't talked to anybody today. I don't think we're gonna get one to go, guys. Anyone, um, we have any aspirations to talk to, get a word to at this point in the race? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, since Cody's in the booth, why don't we bring his boy in? Sounds good to me. Who, who are we pulling in? Oh, actually, we have Dylan Kritz in the uh, infield care center. If you guys want to talk to him, I don't think he'll like me. Uh, yeah, we can bring in uh, Dylan Kritz. Let's see what he's got to say. Mr. Kritz, you got a copy? Got you. Uh, well, it has been an eventful race at Richmond. Uh, a number of cautions and a lot of bickering over the radio. Unfortunately, you got caught up uh, in that last incident there. Walk me through it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we run up against the incident limit tonight already. And that last one just put us right over the edge to try to check up. It just looked like uh, everyone else stacked it up. And I was at the tail end of it. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of... kind of a running theme, I would say, this year. Uh, uh, would you say that the cars being a little bit more sturdy and the damage model being a little bit out of whack is causing higher aggression and, and thus leading to these uh, point-out incident issues? 
Um, I don't know if that's the case. I, I think we, we just, uh, it's a close track, right? And we're just not giving where we should, but it's so difficult to pass that you kind of have to take everything that's given to you. And then right now we have a mix of tires out there, right? So it's kind of, uh, how do you handle it? Yeah, it's a story as old as time. You go to a short track and uh, where you draw the line in the sand with aggression is, uh, well, it's kind of a gray area for sure. And you do see a lot of uh, beating and banging at these kinds of tracks. And unfortunately, the incident limit just taking you out of it. And uh, even more unfortunately, if you didn't have fun here, Dylan, we're going to Bristol next week. How do you feel about doing some more short track racing? It's Bristol dirt, right? Uh, so it's the Bristol Concrete in the 100% Cup Series, and then in Division 2 on Friday, that will be dirt. Okay, so I'll get my dirt fill still. Cool beans, man. It'll be, it'll be fun with Bristol. Um, it's unfortunately a track I'm not super fast at, but it's one I can at least get around. So, uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll race a bit more conservatively next time. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully we'll be talking under better circumstances. Maybe a podium next time. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, Dylan. Well, thank you for your time. Again, we're sorry your night ended the way it did, but uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I don't think these boys are done putting on uh, quite an event. No, I don't think so either. Thanks, Goose. Um, just for the, I think we are going to be pushing record time tonight, so I hope everybody does have their, uh, have their caffeine and have their alarm clock set late for tomorrow morning because we are... Uh, already at about 90 minutes and we're not at halfway so that means we're gonna be probably pushing about three and a half hours if this thing goes at current rate so uh, prepare yourself for a late one folks but maybe the uh, the, the race will uh, come to us now we will be going to spot 230 I don't think we've talked about that in a, a ways time so we still have 50 laps until stage two uh, but worth noting here comes Adam Benefield at the inside of Hoytsman these are the fresh tires that are now 31 laps age to the leaders up front that are 67 laps age. So I know we've had cautions aplenty. I'll kind of point this to you, Cody. We've had cautions aplenty. Uh, where, does, where is a fuel number here? And uh, where do you think that they sit? Do you think they should be able to go another 50 laps to the stage? Yeah, I, I do. I think when that caution came out about 50 laps into the stage, it's put them in the fuel window for this stage. Um, the biggest thing is too, like you mentioned with the heat cycle, we're not seeing necessarily blistering pace from Adam and John. Obviously they're up to third and fourth, but it's they're not going full speed. So we'll see what happens here at the end. I also want to state yeah. that I did fix our side-by-side -side lap counter, but I do just want to rant momentarily. If you like one drive, you're one of those people that likes Bristol dirt and needs to go away, uh, according to Andre. I, one drive is the worst thing ever. Um, just had to get that out there. Uh, but Benefield does get up to second. Who's stuck there to the outside lane? That is Giglio. He'll go back, choo-choo to the back of the train there. Looks like PB2 about seven. Uh, six, Steven, as Miller will get to that spot. And fresh tires, definitely, as I said, they're going to get their way there. Took a little bit longer than I thought. Uh, but here comes those fresh tires, and here they come looking for the lead here in turn three. And it may be a move for the point if Benefield can secure it down low. He's got John Delaney right behind him. And the 21 getter, he's going to try to defend on the high side, but uh, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Corey. As the night goes on, that outside might get a little bit more slippery. You might have to take a more conservative approach when it comes to your braking points and, and how you give the steering inputs and that may be the case for the 21 as he is just leading positions now on the outside the 83 taking the lead and john up in the second now so this is going to be an interesting battle if this stays green this is going to be a good battle the 83 and the six two of the most talented drivers i think all around uh, in the league and they're going to be going at it for the lead here at this short track that has been proven time and time again uh, to be very difficult to pass that's going to be a lot of fun I also want to point out, uh, as far as stages go, you mentioned stage two comes at lap 230. Now, I'm not a big fan of stage racing. Uh, obviously, if I had it my way, uh, being the uh, the nostalgia glasses wearing human being that I am, I would just prefer no stages. But I, I do approve of the changes as to how stages were handled this year by NASCAR. Uh, obviously, no stage cautions at road course. That's a big thing. Uh, and 
it used to be when stages were first implemented, they tried to space them out somewhat evenly for stage one and stage two. This year, they just said, screw it. Uh, stage one, lap 70, stage two, lap 230. Vastly different distances, different strategies for both stages. At least spices things up a little bit. And uh, it, it's definitely a change. I, I can kind of get behind it. Yeah, I would agree with that. And something with the road courses was we were able to see some strategy play out. Whereas a lot of drivers, they just race to the stage and whether they stay out, it's kind of funky how it works. But this year, we saw that change work and hopefully uh, next year we're seeing them going all together, which would be awesome. Yeah, so remember the, one of the biggest things with stages, A, it was an automatic caution to close up the field, but it was also a chance, and this is the most laughable part, if there's a couple more guaranteed cautions, then that would have less green flag commercials because they can get more airtime in on those yellows. And uh, <laughs> clearly, um, you know, we don't need to talk about how that one worked out. In fact, that uh, Dustin Hall to the inside RJ route here, the fact that TV ratings down 15% on average in a contract year probably means it's going to be even more commercials next year uh, because the TV deal is going to probably be a lot smaller than expected. So RAP to that. Uh, maybe we'll get a, a Peacock stream or uh, something like that. We'll pay a subscription. I don't know. Ideas out there. But Alex Murray there in third. Delaney second. Benefield in first. And also worth just bringing back up for those who caught in late. Benefield started outside of the front row immediately put to the back with a restart violation, had to fight his way to stay on the lead lap. He did so, and then methodically get himself back to the race. So even though he started on the outside of the front row, finally it took about 185 laps or so to reset and kind of start the race over as he probably expected it to go. Yeah, and that's another thing Adam's up there in terms of tire saving. And something else to bring up is Dylan mentioned it, the incident limit. Even though we're not seeing a whole lot of attrition, give it another 100 laps and we'll start seeing guys incidented out. Did I say that right? Yes. And you may not have added enough EDs to the end, but it was pretty good for a doobie. Okay, cool. Glad I'm fitting in perfect. What's the sound yeah, you make in that situation, Andre? Yeah, but, okay. That, that's fair. All right, better than okay. Let's go with there that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, the the job requirements for this role are you can you have Be eyes breathing. and noises can come out of your mouth that sometimes turn into cohesive thoughts. That's so. Uh, even that, even that, I would say maybe not necessarily. I mean, we did have somebody say that Vegas races like a short track. I'm not naming names, but. I'm not sure that's a cohesive thought. I mean, it's cohesive. I mean, it's a start, middle, and an end. It just, that would, that would be lack of logic. I, I don't attest to us having logic, but at least our sentences usually do uh, make cohesive sense, uh, even if they're not logical. That'll give us a little bit of credit on that. But closing in on the halfway point in today's race, and uh, I brought up the caution graphic a little bit ago, but we'll kind of bring it up one more time and reset our thoughts on that. Nine cautions, 45 laps. We do have one more guaranteed caution, so we'll have a guaranteed double digits. But put your uh, put your guess in chat. What's this race going to end at with a caution number? If you get it right, then you'll get a PTR TV digital sticker delivered right to your email uh, tomorrow. So you can look forward to that if you get that caution number right. A PTR TV digital sticker. Uh, not quite an NFT. I don't care about that much, but digital stickers, guys. We're, uh, we're really going high budget here. I feel like digital stickers is what people in the 80s thought the internet might be. You know, like, when it first started to become a thing, late 80s, early 90s, we're like, oh, yeah. We're just going to have all the same things we had like in the real world, except it's going to be digital. Uh, which, you know, it, kind of for a while, that's how it was. Uh, and then the internet turned into the absolute terror than it is today. But hey, look at this. On board, looking back towards, Ooh. I believe that is Boyd Biglio. Uh, and I can tell because he's close enough that we can read that name tag. A little bit of a bump there to Patrick Gitter in the 21. Um, again, uh, you know, Cody mentioned it, the incident limit. you got to be careful of bumps like that. You know, you can you can give somebody a shove and it can be a 0x, but 
I find the iRacing penalty system is incredibly unpredictable. Sometimes you get a 4X regardless. They're going to go side by side for that position. There's the number 13 of Susan. He's in the top 10, Cody. There's your boy. He's making the 13 look good. Just give it five more laps. I probably just jinx that car again. Um, kid, when we when we throw my car in holy water, can we throw me under there too? Will that work? Yes, but there's no guarantees I'm going to pull you back up. Mm, just don't hold me down. <laughs> Dustin Hall to the back, or rather to the inside of Souza, trying to push him back to that exact tenth position, and then Andrew Dyson. One of the, the Aussies in the field had a good run last night, and he will try and take that top 10 away. Whoa, what is that? They oh. caught that one live. Oh my goodness, Dustin Hall. Hold on to her, buddy. How did he save that? And was uh, that a fireball? Was that a fireball or a Jaeger bomb? But that was a shot right there that Dyson gave to Hall. Yeah, these, these guys are not worried about that incident limit. Some of these guys in the back of the field, I would, that, well, not even back of the field. I'm so used to being in the back with my car, seeing it up front, it's kind of confusing me. But it's Oh, I'm catching like all right the contact there. live right now. They're, they're just hitting each other with no regard to the incident limit, and I think it's going to come back and bite some guys. That was Showfield and uh, Jedi Jason Taylor, if we give him his nickname that he uh, ever so desires. But as soon as you brought up Jeffrey Souza being in the top 10, he has gone down about three positions. So I guess we'll throw that one on Andre there for the commentator's curse. Yeah, he, he, he can't let me be happy about anything. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that's because I'm not happy about anything, and I just have to make sure that that radiates appropriately. Okay, Squidward. <laughs> Squidward. Nobody wants to listen to you play your clarinet, but you don't have to take it out on the rest of us. That's, you know, I don't play any instruments, but that would probably be my last choice. Oh. And Sean O'Brien just got put three wide. Um, so, the, yeah, these guys are just oh, going. Oh, and, and, oh, oh, that, oh. <laughs> yep. And three wide again. Right Captain Cornflakes to the inside. He caused an incident here today and hasn't really been able to recover from it, but he's going to be to the inside of. Couldn't quite make out the name through the reflection there. But Van Desant trying to recover. Sean O'Brien in the 24th, in the 24th spot. But uh, just kind of going back and focusing on everything that we have right now. Kevin Steele, it's a quiet day for him, but he's to the inside of Lucas Hoitzma, who is headed choo-choo to the back of the train, not having the uh, the best of stints here. He's had a top five car, but not top five uh, overall. But that is largely akin to the tire situation. So, uh, But up front, Delaney starting to do Delaney things at a very slow and methodical pace. You can bring up the lap times on the left side of your display. The last time by Delaney nearly a tenth up. Actually uh, Benefield the slowest of the top three last time, so uh, that lead may not be for much longer. And you got to remember Robert Miller in third place. He's a bit of an unknown right now. Now we know he's fast. He, he got the pole uh, and he has raced his way through the field. He came back from that penalty at the very beginning of the race got his lap back, raced up from, I believe, 33rd all the way up now to third. But we don't necessarily know how he stacks up against the front runners. How is he against Sean? How is he against uh, Adam Benefield? Because we've not really seen these three interact on track together that much uh, until now. So we're going to see, uh, does John Delaney do what he did in the first stage and just drive away with it to a two or three second Miller to the outside making a pass. I haven't seen that one yet in a competitive fashion. Or does Miller do what he just did right there and try to run John down? We'll have to wait and see. But either way, I think we're, we're looking at a pretty good battle in the last 20 laps of the stage. That was yeah, and it, good. It kind of looked like Adam let them both by, knowing that his tires were gone and just trying to avoid incident. That's what it looked like a little. Patrick Gitter, again, he's been a guy who has led a to be shown 125 laps, but uh, he is on that alternate tire strategy. He has now, uh, let's see, on the stint graphic, be 99 
It'll be at the stripe, just because I like to see the number on the screen, because you don't usually see this anymore on the iRacing service. 100 laps since he has come to pit road, so that is a long distance and uh, at least 18 more um, since, unless a caution comes out before the stage. So it'll be a long night, long run on those good years as Kevin Steele in the number seven machine, Apex Designs. He goes to the inside and tries to do a side-by-side -side battle. You know, the only meme we haven't touched on yet is Souza being in 13th in the 13th, and there's a very good chance he finishes the stage in 13th. Um, He's in so 12th. Well, I mean, Kevin Seal's coming with a head of steam. Um, so I, I, if he finishes 13th, uh, I think we hit all the memes tonight. Now he's in 13th. I mean, oh. I can still see the 12th, though. Yeah, we might want to cover that up. But uh, the number seven, so Kevin Steele, I think this track kind of suits him because obviously, you know, the nickname that I've dubbed him, Kevin Consistency Steele, maybe not the fastest car on track week in and week out, but definitely the car that makes probably the fewest mistakes. And in this race, there's a lot of drivers making mistakes. There's a lot of drivers slipping up here and there. And Kevin, well, he's just kind of chugging along at his pace. He's hitting his marks. He's not overdriving the car, pushing it beyond its capabilities. And uh, it's working out because, you know, a little while ago, he was running in the 30s and he was running in the 20s. And now he's just outside the top 10. I think that trend is going to progress. I would not be surprised to see Kevin still have a good night tonight, points-wise, as he finally makes the move. There you go, Cody. The 13th gets put down to 13th. And Kevin Steele takes the photo. He's got a bit of a gap to the wheel, about a second and oh. three tenths. But uh, he does have about. Yeah, yeah, he's got a, a number of laps here. He might be able to make it happen. The gaggle goes on for late teens there. That's uh, Hoitzma still falling back on those old tires along with Gitter that fallen into the clutches of the 12 of Nolan Hodgson. I think the first time we've said that name today since the grid. Big wiggle there from Hoitzma on the bottom. Not much of a surprise given the tire situation. That's Bobby Anderson in the Kellogg's car. Jim Schofield to the outside. Again, these guys just trying to wreck, but it shows the skill. Super old tires, slick track, hot track, and they can still run side by side, lap after lap. Yeah, and if you look at the his number is corn um him being from iowa iowa corn but kevin painted this car and it is corn so a little fun fact there especially with brand i did see that in the discord earlier this week a lot of corn memes uh, obviously uh, john was kind of the king of the corn memes back in the day and kind of uh, i think broke away from it maybe that's part of the evolution of John. I mean, he used to be a, a very records or checkers type driver, very impatient. That was back when he was making all the corn memes. And now, you know, more patient. He's he's uh, shed the, the, the corn husk. Oh, three field. wide and turn one there. That was... And the... Drummiller on the very bottom of this three wide. I don't know how he kept that thing so low with that much momentum, but uh, Ed Irving was able to sort out there. That was Clayton Hoffman in the 92 with the Power Movies, another one of the drivers that we see on Friday night. So usually on Friday nights, he's a top five, fourth to eighth car, somewhere in that range. But uh, back in 20th in tonight's efforts, that's RJ Root uh, trying to squeeze a three wide on the outside lane. Of course, not having the boat to accomplish that move. Top of your screen, Bobby Anderson to the inside of Nolan Hodge, and that's for the 15th spot. But thought that we were going to have a battle for uh, with... Uh, Miller going for the lead. Well, Miller has uh, lost the second spot once again. He had it and then lost it back to Benefiel, who has regained that spot. And you can just see two seconds for Delaney. These guys about a half bit right on each other. Uh, then you go two seconds back to Miller, to Murray, rather. Neil Pearson in the fifth spot, another two and a half seconds back. Then we go another two and a half seconds back to Ammon. A second back. Then we go another two seconds back. So this is basically what we saw last night uh, in Division 2, where once we get going, these guys spread out like peanut butter on bread. They are just all over this track, except uh, we have more cars, so we do have these gaggles like you see on screen. Yeah, this, this racing is much 
and it's really surprising. Obviously, with the tires the way they are, some guys on 110, 115 lap tires, it's going to lead to side-by-side -side racing. And I should point out, Lloyd Hogan, uh, after getting back on the lead lap and uh, coming back from that penalty, he just got into the points for the stage in the P10. He's got two more cars ahead of him within striking distance, I would say, over the next five and a half laps. So possibly going to be able to get uh, an eighth in the stage, which would not be a bad recovery. Meanwhile, John's still pulling away in just a lot of separation. Uh, as uh, as you've seen and pointed out there, Corey, uh, kind of makes a sad little stage caution is going to be coming out to punch these guys back up. So I'm kind of liking this long run race we're getting. Yeah, you do see in the real world, even in the stage era, I mean, green flag stops at Bristol or Martinsville is a very uh, out of the moon kind of occurrence, but you do see it quite frequently, usually even once a race. You'll see green flag stops happen in the real world here. And, uh, if we had 15, 20 more laps, uh, you know, those that did stay out, a Giglio, a Hoitzma, uh, people in that company, they would have no choice. I think the fuel run here is about 130 laps uh, with a lot of caution. Maybe you can get a few more out of it. But we are seeing some of these drivers push the run all the way to the end. But unfortunately, uh, we will have to interrupt this for the sake of forced entertainment. But Delaney catching the end of the field here. So that's... Uh, Matt Desiani, he is the last, he's uh, in the free pass spot right now, but Van Desant uh, will likely be in that spot. We'll see how nice Delaney wants to be. He has enough of a gap over Benefield. He doesn't necessarily have to lap these guys, uh, but it may be advantageous to do so. We'll kind of make that mind up as we come down to about a lap and a half in the stage. Yeah, and something else. So this is definitely coming down to the end here. And if John wants to play nice, we'll see. Um, but at the same point, you want to put as many cars alive down to better your chances. Yeah, definitely uh, that's what you would want to do. But uh, John's playing it patient, it seems. And he's uh, going to let Van Dessen keep the position. He's not going to force the issue. So that 96, I think, just going to skate on by. And that, of course, does give free pass position to the car behind John there. But, oh, a little bit squirrely here at the end of the stage for Blake Giglio. Down the back straightaway, he goes all the way down to the bottom, back up to the middle, sliding in front of the number nine, Alex Brinson. He was going and, for that point. <laughs> and he is uh, able to um, not quite get that point. Uh, Dustin Hall is going to snatch that away from him, the last driver to get a point at the stage. John Delaney is going to double down and win both stages. Double down, just like the KFC sandwich that went back onto the menu this past week. Don't try the nuggets, they're a ripoff, but the double down is uh, quite tasty if you are hungry and want a stomach ache afterwards. But thank, this is a very welcome sight for uh, the company of Clayton Hoffman and uh, Giglio and Hoitzma, who are on those uh, this ridiculously old tires. Uh, they'll finally get to get on even playing field, and here comes everybody to the attention of their pit crews. See all those yeah. marbles there I spoke of earlier. Yeah, and those marbles will bite you on pit entrance. Uh, you got to be careful to watch for the barrels while coming on here. But yeah, as they come down pit road, there's definitely been some movement with Adam Benefield and John Delaney coming back through and John winning the stage. We'll see what kind of pit stops do occur. We saw Miller overshoot his number one pit stall a couple runs ago, but nice clean entry in there. You can see the cone on the screen. Guys coming in that were later in the pack, and there goes Delaney. Not really a race there. Delaney will get that uh, whole shot off pit road with relative ease, and Damaris Hickenbottom staying on track. I, uh, let's see, maybe it was for the lap lead. If it was, it still didn't work. Yeah, I don't. I think with him coming down, he won't get that lap led, nope, especially cause... with such an early pit box. Well, we've got the momentary uh, TV time there, but let's go ahead and see if we can. I'll actually give that responsibility to you, if possible, uh, Cody, if you can grab John Delaney for us, because sometimes I yeah. end up screwing that up here with my busy screens. Uh, gotta find him. Oh. Um can't pull him down because it won't scroll when I pull him because he's so far up. 
<laughs> I'll tell you a trick. If you hit right click, you can move to, and you can drag him right in there. We'll give him in the waiting room just so he has a little bit of heads up. And John Delaney, Corey up in the booth, you got us? I do. All right, well, Delaney doing Delaney things here. Once you got the lead, you shot right out there and started to pull away. Very slick track. Uh, what are you feeling for these last 140 laps? Uh, tires. It, that, that is literally everything here. Uh, you you got to learn how to be smooth and really conserve your tires here, which um, I've been able to do. So um, hopefully we can keep the clean air while trying to save. That would be amazing. Um, and hopefully we go green. Uh, yeah. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah, how much fun are these runs, man? I mean, this is like, kind of like the first, other than the road course, which is in its own anomaly. This is like the first true driver's track. Slick, really got to watch the throttle. You know, everyone is losing it. You get these long green flag runs. Everyone's slipping and sliding. How much fun are these long green runs where you're really in control of your own destiny? I, I love it. Um, you know, so after 20, 30 laps, you know, the, the dry... The, People's, um, I guess, ability to save tires kind of shows, um, you know, you can really tell the people who can and or did and didn't. Um, and, you know, when you are 50 laps on a run, you know, you're slipping and sliding and just driving it. It's, it's super fun. So and you're also battling people, too, which is it's, it's amazing. Oh, we'll see if the racing gods will play this clean for or if you'll have to kind of claw at a Coda style. We'll see what happens, but we'll let you get back at it, man. Good luck. Thank you. That is our stage winner, John Delady, 82 laps led. And again, like I said, uh, Cody, this could end Coda style. You know, a really good race that ends in an absolute cluster. Uh, hopefully that's not the case, but, you know, very well could happen. Uh, you don't like seeing the fastest guy getting taken out of these races. But here we come into the restart zone. It's a very dangerous restart zone, as we've seen many a time. And Delaney will get the jump. Hopefully it's a legal jump. And we're racing for stage three. Yeah, and you kind of noticed it on that restart, too, that the second and third place guy, with Adam being bit the first time, kind of stayed back a little, um, so that way he wouldn't get a penalty, and provided him an opportunity to slot into third, and uh, we're still green, and Mark Padgett up in the top ten after all the incidents he's been in yeah. is kind of impressive as well. Yeah, he's going to really have to worry about that, because he's going to be right on that number, but... Everybody is uh, funneling through single file in bits and pieces to have some double file and uh, some. Oh, there we go. Hit Demaris around on the back. And Jeff was involved in that one. So the car is cursed. Yep, but yeah, it just looked like an incident coming off a restart where they stacked up like that. Yep, so if you had mail. Uh, the your package is going to be slightly dented there, so uh, replay queued up on screen. You can see uh, the three wide, your boy right in the middle there, and that was almost a four wide for a brief moment there. We'll uh, kind of queue that up in a modest amount of slow motion. I'm not the best slow motion in the world, but we'll queue it up here. I do think they were four wide. Yep, there's Root on the bottom. Get her. Oh, yep, yeah, that's four wide. Yeah, I don't think Damaris was quite prepared for that, so I don't really put your boy at any kind of fault there. I don't think Damaris was fully aware of the situation at hand, and unfortunately, um, that is the situation it put us in. Yeah, and something I saw interesting on that restart was Damaris coming off pit road. I know he did stay out for that, uh, to be in first, but... It seemed like he was coming off pit road right as the field was coming back to green, so I wonder if that had a factor in that. Um, but it's unfortunate to see anyway coming off a restart. Yeah, his last pit time, he was in the well, 14 seconds, so it wasn't anything crazy, but he did pit um, later than everybody else. He kind of pit at the end of the caution. I think maybe I need one to go, which sometimes gets you to the back of the field, and other times it, you know, on a short track like this, you can't always make it around in time, but either way puts us under, I believe it is our 11th caution of tonight's efforts. And we have all of our heavy hitters up front. We got Delaney, we got Miller, Benefield, Murray, and Pearson uh, up front. We'll uh, see if we can have a quick word with uh, one more. Let's. Uh... Want to pull in Adam? Nah, Adam talks too much. Okay. <laughs> um, I know he's listening, Robert too, because he has long interviews, so we have to, you know, 
err on the uh, side of caution. But <laughs> I love you, Adam, but sorry, man. Uh, we'll take uh, Lucas Voitsma, who's at an up and down day. Lucas, Corey, up in the booth, you got us, bud. Yeah. So you, you have a fast car. Strategy's been all over the place today. Caution's been all over the place, but now you're in 20th. I know you get a faster car than that. How are you going to get back up there? Well, we're going to try to duck and dive around while also saving these tires, but I'm hoping we get a caution fest here that'll allow me to take all these tire sets I got left in the pits. Yeah, I know last night that was a big thing for these guys was, you know, some uh, Neil, like Neil Pearson had an interesting tire strategy last night. Our guys were saving that set and then it really, you really never had a good chance to use it. And we got so many guys on the lead lap here. How do you use those extra tires without losing all the track position? I don't know. This is not really working out how I hoped it would, but uh, we're going to roll with it. Made the bed. I got to sit in it. Yep, and uh, I know it's hard to pass out there. It's, uh, you know, incident limit. You're, you're okay with that? You feel like you got something to play with? Or are you going to be riding on edge? Oh, I got zero still. We are good. All right. Well, you got something to play with, so take that as what it is. So we'll see how you race it. Anyway, good luck. We'll let you get back out there. Absolutely, man. Thanks. Oh, and Andre comes back just as I finish talking to one of his drivers. I return peanut butter and jelly in hand. Uh, Phil, man, uh, this can't be the same caution, right? Did we get another restart? Yeah, uh, we had a brief four-wide endeavor on the back straightaway uh, with Jeffrey Souza, who kind of got squeezed by Damaris, who did not quite realize that they were four abreast on the back straightaway just after the restart. So we are on our second, well, I guess our first caution of stage three, if you want to use that verbiage. Gotcha, gotcha. So looks like... Uh, Robert Miller back to the front row, but John's going to have a bit of an advantage here being the control car on the low line. We've not really seen the leader take the outside yet tonight. It's something interesting to note, but John with a solid jump there. Robert playing it a little bit safe, probably remembering that penalty he got back on lap one. And now a battle for second place, the 83 kind of take it back. Yeah, and we saw this on the re last restart with it looked like second and third lane back a little. And it's allowing Adam to get to the left rear quarter panel of Robert Miller. Um, from what I experienced, side drafting is still a big impact, and it goes to show what's happening. Neil Pearson in the fifth spot. He was under fire for a brief moment from Blake Giglio, he took a look, but decided to uh, air on the side of caution right there. And uh, he is under fire for Mark Padgett. We don't know the exact incident number on Mark Padgett, but we know it is not zero, which we just heard Lucas Hoitzma still at zero. So he uh, has some uh, aggression in the tank that he can use, but I don't think that zero two has the same luxury of using that statement, but he's trying to work that outside uh, in the seventh spot. Andrew Dyson, he's been, uh, he's hit everything except the lottery here tonight. He's in eighth. Kyle Ammon, Kyle Amun. He is there in ninth. Again, another one who has, I don't think Ammon's been in the incidents tonight, but he's definitely been in a lot of scary situations, just hanging on to the top 10. And then Boyd, Boyd Hagen, he has, what hasn't he been in tonight? Here he is in the top 10. Yeah. Here we're starting to see the drivers who have crashed and squalled their scratch and clawed their way back into the top 10. And from what I've noticed, it seems like the top 10 is drivers who are consistent. And like you mentioned earlier, avoid incident. Ooh, contact there between uh, Ammon and uh, that's Dyson there. That's kind of meeting in the middle there off of two and almost met in the middle there off of three and four. Dyson in the wall. I wonder if that's a zero X. Hopefully it is for his sake. Yeah. All that happening right in front of Boyd, I think. Uh we would have to check up a little bit there. That was a near incident, but we're going to have that when these guys are battling as hard as they are on somewhat fresh tires. Feel a little bit bold, but I think the best thing for Boyd right now is just to be a little bit patient. He spent this long clawing his way back up, like Cody said, just trying to make up for the mistakes that he's made, and uh, you don't want to throw that away right now. You're in the top 10, you got a good position. Let these guys battle it out and then make the that's what it is. Let them do the work for you. And your boy Jeffrey Souza, he's not making a pass there. Uh, he is, oh, he might be making a pass or he might be being passed. That's Chad Sanner. Sanner was around once or twice today. So, again, that's just tank mode at its finest. And of the 39 guys that took time here today at Richmond, we still have 30 of them on the lead lap. 
and 33 on the track, two being one lap down, one being two laps down. So an incident of uh, significant proportion is going to be very, very hurtful on the running order. Yeah, that's the thing. If anything is impressive with Richmond, is it always seems to produce a high number of cars on the lead lap and running at the end. So with all these incidents, we may still see that mass exodus of incident and if that happens some guys towards the back may be able to capitalize yeah and again it just goes back to playing it patient uh if you're one of these drivers who has a little bit in the bank maybe don't get too excited about that don't think that ah you know i'm over halfway through the race i got zero x just keep them in the bank keep playing it safe because like you said cody we're going to have that exodus of drivers towards the end of the race that have just been slowly racking those up, and they're going to get pointed out, and then at that point, we can try to make a move. It seems as such that uh, you know, most of the double file has, at least for the moment, uh, subsided. So we are going to, for the first time in tonight's race, we are going to have some temporarily loud engine sounds. That is our temporarily loud engine sounds. I made the graphic for it. I, did get, I actually did get one in submission from our fans, so I do want to appreciate that, but um, I got it after I had already made mine, so um, that is that. So appreciate the fan feedback there and the fans helping us out here, but uh, back to the live racing action, and again, not really any side-by-side -side battles. Just as I say that, one does come to fruition, Paget. Uh, is soon to be passed by Blake Giglio, Atlanta's winner in that photo finish over Hoitzma, or perhaps vice versa. I know you already corrected me on it earlier, Andre, but I already forgot because that's just how our brains work, and they will meet in the middle on corner exit, but Paget will back off and give Giglio the spot. Yeah, and uh, some more. Some of these guys who were towards the back of the field after being strong, um, you'll see them start to try to work their way forward, but now being back in this traffic, your tires may not grip up as quick, and you're more fighting either dirty loose or really tight, so that changes how a driver drives this track. Yep, well, let's see, let's 
Makes me uh, go back to, I think Andre is uh, having peanut butter stuck to the roof of his mouth here, but uh, we'll go back to our weather conditions here and track temp was upwards of 110-ish earlier. Well, the air temp has only gone down one degree, but track temp has gone down about 10, 15-ish degrees since the beginning of the race. So uh, these guys definitely having a little bit more grip. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit because uh, Richmond, not a track that ever offers a lot of grip, even at night, uh, which is kind of another topic of contention because I know a couple years ago, you know, Richmond trying to get, you know, some of his nostalgia back. Uh, they decided to have a day race uh, as they used to have in the mid-90s. And, well, now Richmond is strictly a day race, which on both of its events, I, I can't quite grasp that. Can either of you? It, it's all part of this TV deal with the broadcast wanting more three o'clock starts and no Saturday races, obviously Saturday nights. There's other sports on, there's other uh, events people attend on a nightly basis, but they went to Sundays and now the only night races we really see are on Sundays. Yeah. And it, it is frustrating too because these three o'clock start times that they keep pushing for, there have been so many weekends where it is beautiful and sunny from like noon until three, more than enough time to get most of the race in. And then as soon as three o'clock hits, because of course it does, the rain comes in and we get the lightning clock and then we don't get a race that day. When we could have gotten three quarters of it or more in had we just started at noon like we used to back when people had a little bit of common sense. I remember ESPN actually, I remember you know getting ready to watch NASCAR today uh, which was the pre-race show on ESPN. And there'd be some situations where, you know, the, that would start at 12, the race would start at 1, and then I'd, you know, tune in at 12 o'clock for NASCAR today, and they were already on track. They said, nope, we had to pull the race early. We had to start it early. We didn't think we were going to get it. You never see that anymore. You, you know, there's these windows of time that we know we're not going to get the race in at 3, but we might be able to get it in at 12.30, and there's enough channels out there we can take professional we can take teenager female bowling off of tv you know we can turn off the rerun of charlie's bass fishing we don't need to watch shark tank on cn like we have channels that we can put this stuff on uh, but clearly that repeat of shark tank is you know or bass fishing is just it's too vital yeah and that's something else i've noticed too like the thing I remember about Richmond was 2014 Richmond, where you saw that battle between kind of the, I, I think it was Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, when he was all in his intimidator phase, and they were beaten and banging at night. And night races always seem to produce some more of the entertaining things instead of day races. Well, I'm just, I think a, a fun novelty, and I think a lot of people enjoy it because hey, you know, after a long weekend of doing whatever it is you do, you know, coming home on a Saturday night, turning on the race, sitting down, and just, you know, relaxing, and then having your Sunday free to do whatever also, that was kind of nice. I think people like that. Uh, but unfortunately, the TV overlords have decided, no, we have to have 3 p.m. start times. Uh, we can't move the, the race uh, if the weather looks imminent, which, okay, to their defense, which I hate to do, uh, there is a law that you actually cannot move the start time of a sporting event that you've sold tickets for by more than an hour, I believe it is. It's either an hour or two hours. Um, otherwise, <clears throat> you have to refund pretty much anybody who bought a ticket. Which, of course, NASCAR is not going to do. They're going to part with the money. No, and I wouldn't fault them either for that, Andre. The, you know, like, to operate as a track, you need to have that revenue stream and to refund probably a crowd of 25 30,000 people all their money that's not good business actually i'm gonna i'm gonna correct you on that because i do actually know the finances the tracks make most of the money from the tv deal so yeah. ticket sales actually are kind of just the icing on the cake when it comes to revenue that's why you don't see promoters going crazy anymore they don't have to um because they are just getting so much guaranteed money from the tv structure which actually then further hurts the at track experience because, uh, so let's say NASCAR and these tracks that NASCAR owns don't care about actual in-person events. 
they'll have these websites that sell tickets third party approach them and say hey let me buy in bulk like 10,000 tickets for pretty much next to nothing so that I can resell them on my website for 200% profit. And NASCAR just says, yeah, we don't, we don't really care about the ticket money anyways. We run, run away with it. So then you look at tickets, right? And you look at what's sold out. And I actually just ran into this because I got Martinsville tickets. It'll say that a whole section of the grandstands is sold out. You can't get tickets there. But then you go on another website and all of a sudden, no, 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 you can get tickets here. It's just that we have all the tickets for that section and you have to buy them from us. It's an absolute pain. It is not fun at all. And yeah. That, you mean buying? You mean buying? Not even just buying. I mean, we could just completely go astray because I do have a wife that is a Swifty and we don't even need to talk about the whole Ticketmaster fiasco. Basically, if you want to buy a ticket in America, it is just the, it is just literally getting your teeth pulled with no Novocaine. It's awful. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be sitting in the handicap seating, obviously, being in a wheelchair at Martinsville. But then my buddy, who's also in a wheelchair, decided he wanted to go. And he couldn't find handicap seating next to ours. And I just told him, I'm like, look, chances are, number one, you could buy a ticket for anywhere and still sit with me and nobody's going to say a word. Because chances are, those quote unquote sold out seats aren't actually sold out. And second of all, if anybody does say anything, I'm just going to throw a beer can at their head and it'll be that. So. <laughs> So don't sit next to Andre at Martinsville. Got it. Just don't ask anybody that's with me to move, and you'll be safe. <laughs> All right, this is going to be the last point, and then we'll actually get to on track racing. This is kind of a, just a generic point. Is there any purpose whatsoever to the ticket reselling industry? No, uh, just to make money. That's it. Like, if you want a ticket, you buy the a ticket for the event, you have a ticket, you're going to go to the event. There is literally not one justifiable in worthwhile reason i can understand as to why the ticket reselling market exists and there's people whose job it is to sell tickets on the resell market it's just one of those things that it just exists for absolutely no reason but it's an entire billions and billions dollar industry and it's never going to get taken away because the government makes tax revenue on it so why would they ever get rid of that for the benefit of the american citizen but there's a sim race going on so uh, that is Silva, Go Silva Sounds Off, along with the facilitation of Cody Bird and Andre Grandbush. Andre, if you want your own segment, you just got to give me a name. I'll have a graphic ready for Monday. <laughs> all right. Or maybe well, next you, Monday. It's kind of short. You say, that, you say there's a sim race going on, but all I see is John Mulaney just kind of driving off into the sunset. Uh, he, he did that in stage one. He did it in stage two. Now here he is in stage three, trying to do the same thing again. Robert Miller... He's holding tight, you know, he's got that life preserver thrown around that number six car. He's trying to get pulled along a second back, but that gap is just increasing ever so slightly. When you say sunset, I know we're not obviously going to be going into the night here, but I can just tell by the uh, the shadows conflicting and hurting my virtual my frame right here that it is getting a little bit later in the afternoon if one of you can divulge that piece of information. So, according to InSim, it is now... 5.52, so almost 6 o'clock in Sim. Uh, I, I don't know why it always takes me a second to translate military time it's into... Just minus 12, that's all you got to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I know, and yet I still struggle because I'm just not the brightest so night in the show. So, so it's 5.52 Sim time. We are estimated at least 45 minutes of racing action, part of my estimator, if this goes green. So that means we're ending... Well, realistically, we're ending close to 7 o'clock, so this is not going to be a night race, but the lights may... Yeah, the, oh, smoke, 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 oh, smoke, smoke, goodie, smoke, smoke, smoke. That was the 13th, wasn't it? Cody, what did you do now? Oh, oh it was oh. the 13th. Oh, and the pit barrels right there. Thank God he avoided them. Oh, my goodness. Well, he, oh, he was in the marbles, in all sincerity. He was in the marbles there. We did talk about that, but let's see if the marbles were a scene there. He entered turn number three, and he was, was he trying to make a pit stop? And marbles plus mm -hmm. banking difference equals spin. That's... I, I, I would think he was trying to pit. It looked like he drove down on the apron, but why? I mean, we just had a caution not that long ago. He may be overheating. I noticed some front-end damage, so I'm wondering if he had to pit um, to get some damage fixed. That could be the case. That's a good call-out. Unfortunately, that... 
banking transition like Corey said it and it is a brutal bank banking transition you saw it just pulled that car right around and now that that caution has come out we do have quite a few takers down pit road Jonathan Delaney the first among them but then here comes Robert Miller so here's an interesting situation Robert Miller is going to have the quicker pit road exit with that first stall but John is going to get to his pit stall first so does it balance out? Does John get the the win off of pit road, or does Robert just barely go him out? No, it's not even close. Robert wasn't even wheels to the ground when uh, John was crossing from that line, so not uh, an unfamiliar situation to see John get that uh, win off pit road. Sean O'Brien stayed out. I mean, knowing him, he's going to pit this time by, but... No, I, well, okay, maybe he will. I was going to say maybe he's actually going to stay out, but... Um, Maybe just wanting that lap led again. This lead does not do bonus points for lap sled, as NASCAR does not do uh, bonus points for that anymore, even they though don't? they should. Oh, um, wow. I don't think NASCAR, unless they changed it for this very year, but for the last 10 years or so, they've not done lap sled points. Oh, wow. That's... Ever since, I believe it was right around stages, they went to a simplified point system. <laughs> uh, <laughs> air quotes around simplified um but i believe it's been 40 for 40 points for the win 10 for each stage win and then down and then um yeah that and then five bonus if you yeah. win that's so uh, simple you know the the, the the series that has a playoff system that works via the structure that you could win the first 35 races of the year and then finish second in the race 36th and lose the championship. That is that is the sport that we are emulating here. Yeah, and Sean O'Brien actually took the wave around on that last caution. Yeah, so he took a wave around and then uh, ducked it down pit road, but uh, it looks like, did the number four stay out? Uh... Delaney registered as the leader, and everybody has come to the attention of their crews within the last two to three laps. So, okay, so Dicciani actually might also be taking a wave around potentially, or he's going to get sent to the back because he is a lap down according to scoring and timing. And What's timing and scoring? Before. Scoring, timing, and scoring T and S, but the alphabet goes S T. So why do we say it backwards? Um. I don't like thinking about that. Nope. You've nope, never you thought of that once in your life, and now you're like, why are we saying it? We're in reverse alphabetical yeah. order. I mean, and they're right next to each other, too. And, you know, QRS. I mean, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to give gender roles, but I suppose that timing is the wife because the wife always has to come first. Well, you know, I've always seen the letter T as like an aggressive letter. You know, kind of like. So it's a wife. So there you go. I mean. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like like the number five. I think most people see the number five as like a mean number. It just kind of looks it, aggressive. It's all angly. It's a meme. That's why it's a Terry Labonte car on a on a Camry. No, no, no mean. Oh, like an angry mm. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm used to this new hip graphic culture. But pace car is in. Delaney gets on the throttle, and uh, that looked as clean of a restart as I think I've seen in quite some time here. He'll get the jump and. Miller didn't get quite a good jump to clear Benefield. He'll clear him, but clear him by a whisker there. Kind of shut the door on him, but one and two and three even will be in single file. And now uh, looks like Alex Murray really trying to dive to the outside of Giglio. Giglio sort of around, loses it. Everybody else trying to funnel around, and we stay at it. That was an interesting one. It, it looked like he just kind of lost it on the bottom. Um, we're obviously racing side by side with Alex Murray. It looks like he dives it in there and just yep. washes up. Oh, there's the contact. Yeah, he locked it up. He overcooked it. Barely oh. missed the pit wall. Oh. Man, oh man, he threaded that needle. But that's actually one of the, I think, the first instances of wheel lock up that we've seen tonight, which uh, if you remember last year, Cody, I think the drivers were locking up the tires just about every single corner because the brakes on this next gen car last year were uh, just a touch more sensitive. Yeah. Absolutely, and I was one of those drivers that locked up those tires a lot. And we got contact in the back of the field. Jim Schofield is sideways. Uh, Demar's taking oh, bottom. Yeah, we uh, we have some problems. Yeah, big big wreck. Color so, shout. Yeah, um, you just had to say something about us getting out of here before sunset, Corey. Oh, we gotta go back a little bit. 
further there. You can see Barney had a nice view of that, but we'll, uh, we'll get a better look at it. The aggressive flag wave uh, from Barney, but all right, let's keep our eye on that uh, zero 09 machine. I believe he is going to be the... What is with the cook? Like, we have some overcooked steaks here today because people are uh, definitely driving in these corners uh, hard. Just the overcorrection. And Vandesant, again, involved. He took a bump there that I have to assume is a 4X. Right. It stems from, watch the 41 machine of Taylor. Look how far ahead, well, how far behind he is. And just completely full send. I mean, look the stamp. And send it. Put the stamp and wreck it. I think is what he did. <laughs> um, but uh, you got to think Van Sant's getting a little bit close to that incident limit because how many cautions have we seen? How many PTR TV replays have we pulled up and we see that 96 machine involved somewhere? Yeah. Unlucky 13 on the caution yeah. graphic. Just 13s everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little, uh, little concerned with those 13s everywhere. So I'll tell you All what, right. I don't think anybody's going to pit. We've had everybody come down. So road. let's talk to somebody just completely random that wouldn't has we have no reason to talk to, but just because it'll surprise them and they'll be like, why are you talking to me? Let's, do we have any of those? Um, well, we could bring in Dustin Hall. Uh, he's been on camera a little bit, but yeah, no real reason to pull him in. All right. Have at it, Andre. Mr. Hall, you got a copy? Yeah, I got you, bud. Well, uh, 13 cautions on the night. That number one car is still looking pretty unscathed. Maybe a dent or a dig here or there, but more or less you're looking pretty good out there. Currently running ninth. How's it going? Yeah, it's uh, it's been going pretty good. Um, it's, it's hard to balance. You know, do I want to go with the short run pace and plan on some cautions? Or do we need to save? I've kind of done a mixed bag and, and seem to be in the... Maybe maybe one for four <laughs> here to show if I'm making the right choice, but um, yeah, we're just gonna keep trying and you know to move forward here. And I think it's probably gonna be you know we're gonna add to that number of 13 here pretty quick. Yeah, uh, the race has gone both ways at various points. We've had some long green flag runs and we've had some outbreaks of cautions, but uh, overall it looks like this race is gonna go on a little bit longer than most of the races we've had this this year. Uh, is it starting to get a little bit tiring? Uh, how's the <laughs> how's the focus? Yeah, um, as old as I am, I'm grateful for these breaks. It's been <laughs> gives me a chance to stretch the knee a little bit, uh, settle in. Um, you're gonna see a mixed bag here if it does go green. People trying to make it to the end, some splitting it halfway, uh, some rolling the dice, staying out, thinking that that caution's gonna come out and take advantage of it. Um, still a lot of cars on the track so i'm kind of banking toward we go we go yellow but no it's good good breaks uh for this old guy to try and refocus up and get a little sip of water and go back at it all right well 300 down 100 more to go dustin we'll put you back with your team good luck hey thank you appreciate you dragging me <clears throat> dustin hall out of the booth and he's thankful for the breaks and i yeah. don't blame him this track is uh Retiring. I will actually say, you know, as a guy who is uh, not the youngest, uh, not a spring chicken anymore, we go back to the night racing topic. If there's one thing about day races, I will admit, I do have a hard time staying up late enough for night races. I know that, uh, obviously covering these, you know, I really have to caffeinate myself, stay up till 12, 30, 1 o'clock sometimes. But on average, uh, being able to go to bed at 9.30 and say I watched a whole day of racing, I take that as a, uh, a good day. And uh, got some notifications in chat here. Uh, can I chat with Nolan? We'll talk to Nolan next caution. We have absolutely no reason to talk to him from a racing standpoint, so we'll surprise him and uh, make his girl happy there. Maybe that'll help him out later after the race. But green flag back in the air. Delaney gets that jump. We'll see if Miller can clear Benefield. Doesn't look at the moment he'll be able to, but see if he sends it into one. It's kind of also surprising. Robert seems to be getting a good launch off of two on these restarts on top, being able to re-clear Benefield. And we'll see if that comes into play later in the race when he to risk a restart to get past him, but risk the restart zone. Yeah, obviously the restart zone is a little bit of havoc on a few drivers tonight and thus far, but uh, that remains to be seen how much it continues to play havoc. Boyd Hogan makes a move on Alex Murray in the 22, and we got some side-by-side -side action in the number 62 and the 02 of Paget trying to sort out 
Hey, who's going to take P8? Well, uh, right now, it looks like the 62 might get it down low, but uh, actually, right now, kind of a freight train on the top, and they're kind of moving. Well, that outside really rubbered in. We saw earlier, you know, when this race first started that only the bottom had rubber. We, oh, that's Hoffman, I think, that murdered the fence there um, in the curb machine. Um, but that there was no rubber beyond the first hash mark, but uh, it is pretty well rubbered in there from that, you know, basically that entire second lane. That makes it a more viable place to run. Uh, therefore, you will see drivers getting up there with a little bit more confidence. You saw Miller doing that on the restarts, but, and Miller's taking the lead. Yeah, he blew right by John. The um, question is, how good is that 15 going to be in clean air? Uh, we're taking a look at PTR TV replay, see exactly how uh, the number 15 took the lead. We just got a really good run coming out of two down back straight away. That's it. Yeah. Out of the sticks and simple guys, he just takes the lead now. Again, uh, how good is this car going to be in clean air? We're not sure. It seems like John, once he got to the lead, was able to drive away with it pretty solidly. So long run speed to be expected. I kind of, I don't know. I think we're going to see a battle between those two. And we went further back. Uh, there is no separation. Alex Murray, middle of the same chair, board holding out front. The Zero Four machine right behind them. Just trying to figure out where they're going to make this move. Hogan, another unknown, I would say. We, we know that he's got some speed. Oh, okay, yellow. Back. But, oh, okay, well, there we go. Guys, I think I just need to retire altogether. Ralph Hutchison. Oh, I, I saw the hood ornament, and I thought it was the 13 again. Um, hood ornament? Did I say hood ornament? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> the hood ornament of the CI. I don't um, like at all. <laughs> that was the night of Alex Ow. Prince in there that got a, got a little tap there from, uh, looks like he shut the door. Hutchison had the, the run there. He wasn't quite ready for it. A slow methodical spin and loops it there, but I don't think there was enough, especially in hashtag tank mode, I don't think there was anything to take anybody out of it uh, for the long run there. <laughs> the hood ornament. <laughs> oh, all right, that's getting added to the list. Uh, yeah, not my brightest moment. But, uh, hey, do you want to bring up Nolan Hodgins? Hodginson up into the booth all right or Hodgson if we uh, you know not put all the syllables in there Yeah, let's go ahead and grab him. Looking for him Nolan this is Cody up in the booth you got a copy Yes, sir All right, so you had a special request from a Cali to bring you up into the booth so uh, how's your race going so far? And uh, what do you expect to hear over the last 92 laps? I like to think my race is going pretty good. I uh, started in the back. I'm so far able to work my way up to the top 20 area. Uh, I've been trying to keep myself clean out of the wrecks. I think my plan's going pretty smoothly and I think we'll just see what happens from here. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, there's not too much of this caution breed caution type stuff. Now, with all these restarts and everything, how does it play a factor on your ability on these restarts? Does it get in your head, oh, there's going to be another one coming up and I'll have to redo this? Or are you just going with the flow? Well, I just, uh, I don't try to be too aggressive on these restarts because being aggressive is the number one leading cause of being in the wreck. So I uh, I try to let people be what do whatever they do and, you know, Hopefully I catch him back. Absolutely. All right, Nolan, well, we'll wish you luck here over the last 91 laps, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right, that is Nolan there, though. I don't think he's really been in too many incidents here today, so... Um, Again, the guys that I think we're most concerned about when it comes to that incident cap would uh, would be Mark Paget up front. I would even I'd throw Dyson in that mix as well. Uh, Dustin Hall, he's been involved in some. All right, once I start doing this game, I'm ba I guess I'm basically talking about everybody from 10th on back. But uh, Miller, Delaney, Benefield, I think those guys are clean and ready to go. We did talk to Lucas Hoitzma. Uh, what feels like last week at this point, and he said he was 0x, so... Uh, unfortunately, Fermi's back in 24th now, so I would not be surprised if one has been accrued on that 07 at this point. Yeah, you would think uh, being uh, involved in a little bit of a scuffle there probably would get a point or two, but 
Uh, if you had some in the bank, then uh, don't need to sweat it quite yet. But I don't know, man. Uh, no one said hopefully cautions don't breed cautions, but we're, uh, what, 14 cautions in? I, I don't quite expect uh, things to change right at this second, especially when we get closer to the end of the race. People are just going to get more and more desperate, and there is still a lot of cars to be desperate uh, on the track. Let's take a look at the weather update. Track temp is on 88, so it is almost 20 degrees cooler now uh, than it was at the top of the broadcast. That is probably one of the biggest changes I've seen all year. Yeah, and the track temp going out and the sun definitely going down. We are in essentially full shade here. A lot of solar reflections on these cars down the straightaways as the green flag is in the air, so the sun might actually start bothering mm -hmm. these guys. And we may end with the lights on, even if not nighttime, but uh, everybody funneling into turns number one and two. Delaney falls in line second. Benefield side by side with Paget uh, for the fourth spot, but they are basically double file formation for the remainder of the field here. And I think we're about three back-to-back -back cautions in a row in sequence here, so hopefully we can uh, string this thing out and let these guys battle and you know have those long green flag runs we had earlier on in the race. I don't know if Adam spun his tires a little bit on that restart, but he backed right up to the bumper of Dyson in the 0-4. It actually caused a little bit of contact. Uh, I'm not sure, again, if he was just trying to play it safe and avoid a penalty or if it was some risk, but uh, not the typical good restart that we've seen so many times out of the 83. He's going to concede another position now to Padgett with Dyson not far behind. He's going to grab another one. Robert Miller saw it. Carney's got a, about half a second over Murray. The lady is currently P3, he's about 8 tenths of a second back. Uh, and then you get to this guy who, right here who's trying to sort that out. Look at this, 3 Levine coming out of turn 4. How did they sort that out? I don't know, but they're able to keep it going. Too wide now. Oh, Sean Brown Jr. slides right in front of Luke Swartzma. Pretty impressive stuff when you can go too wide in a very congested area of the track. And oh. uh, keep it going. O'Brien oh, kind of got sandwiched there between Hoitzma and Hodgson, who we just spoke to. So uh, Hutchison there trying to recover from his spin, and that's kind of a situation that many people are in. You know, they get spun out, they go back to the mid 20s because you know we still have 28 guys on lead lap, and you know that makes them hungrier to get through the mess. And then being hungry to try to get through the mess usually means that you're going to cause another mess. As uh, I think that was Hoitzma locks him up there, going into the corner. So something else to take into consideration, we saw Hoitzman back in the 20s. With 90 laps to go, they a lot of these guys out front had put a multiple heat cycles on their tires. So this may be a long play like you saw last night, Corey, where guys are pitting now in the hopes that it stays green. And at the end of the run, they're going to have the fresh tires and go after a win. I, my only contention to that is, you know, you kind of have to feel, what's, what's that saying they say when you're with a bunch of people? You have to read the room. And last night, it had the vibe of a green flag race. But this race, I mean, it could catch us by surprise. You know, we had that little moment earlier. But I think if you read the room here, I think most people know that we're going to have probably two or three more cautions. So you, you kind of don't want to probably put all, you know, show everything you have. But at the same time, uh, you kind of have to prepare that maybe there's a 10% chance this can go to the end. But knowing that it's probably not. Tell you, Chad Sanner, he has been, I mean, that guy has been through the ringer and back 10 times today, and he is knocking on the door of a top 10 up to the 14th spot. So, you know, a lot of these guys doing recoveries, they can thank uh, solid teams and good setups, and they can also thank iRacing for a terrible damage model, and uh, just have to be careful about that incident limit. So let's find out what happened to Randy Drumheller. He's in the infield care center. Uh, I went and tried to see exactly what happened to him. I didn't see him in the last rep. He came down pit road, took tires, and then manually disconnected. So let's see what's going on. Uh, Mr. Drummiller, you got a copy? Yes, I do. Well, Randy, we see him come down pit road and then take it behind the wall. The car didn't look too badly damaged. What's going on, man? Well, that caution before it ended up hitting something oh, pretty bad. It took six minutes to repair it, and the car was still in driving right after that, so I had to park it in the cars on another caution. I understand that if the car is not handling well sometimes, so much it can be uh, uh, This race has been quite chaotic, a lot of attrition, a lot of uh, yellow flags out there. Uh, what was your experience like all night long? I mean, what's it like out here? Well, that pretty much describes it. But... Uh, as far as the car, 
the longer we ran, the better I got. But Jeff couldn't even go off on long enough runs, and there's just too many cautions. Guys are just, you know, it must be full moon or something. I don't know. Well, might be a full moon. It might just be Richmond. Uh, I know this track has uh, put on some pretty crazy races for us in the past, but. Um, I gotta ask you, as far as how the car is driving, you said you didn't have a problem with that, the way your car handled. We've seen a few drivers start to lock up their brakes as we get a little bit later into the race. How were the brakes on your car, and is there any concern at this track about overheating the brakes? No, I don't think so. I didn't have any issues with the brakes at all. Um, I was really, you know, not pushing it hard in the corner, but the corner back it up quite a bit, and I was fine. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, uh, next week, uh, obviously this race didn't end quite the way you'd like, but next week we're going to Bristol. It's going to be Concrete Bristol in the 100% series, and it's going to be Dirt Bristol in Division 2. Uh, how do you feel about the, uh, the last great policy? Uh, well, um, if I miss Friday night, that wouldn't bother me, um, but I'll be there <laughs> for the Concrete. I'm right there with you. Dirt Bristol, not my cup of tea, but Concrete Bristol should be fun, and uh, hopefully you have a little bit better luck there. Yep, thank you. And I would say thanks to EPI and Dustin and the guys back at the shop for the great setup this week. Uh, All right, thank you for your time, Randy. Right. Luciani here, he is uh, getting shuffled back. Remember, he was one of the drivers that was really having a quite favorable run. He was pushing, you know, up into the top top 10 uh, on the door of a top five back there in the 20th spot on the outside of J.C. Gibson. Ralph Hutchison there in the mix. Kevin Seal just on the beginning of this shot there is Hutchison trying to recover from earlier issues. And uh, this battle goes on uh, upwards of about the 20th position. Oh, I think we got a change here. Teammates battling or battled in past tense. Hoitzma just gets by Giglio and uh, focusing on what's going on up front. A, little, a lot of nothing as Miller hangs on by about three, four tenths of a second. Uh, and Delaney back about almost a second overall so you know at this point and we've talked about it track temp changing drastically this race uh carrying on maybe a little bit longer than expected i don't think guys expected us to run maybe this late pushing the uh, the edge of sunset here uh you think delaney's car not reacting uh, favorably to these cooler track temps I, I think a lot of what John's doing right now is expecting, because we have gone green here for about 30 laps, a longer run and just trying to save his tires so that way at the end he is competitive. Uh, speaking of people taking tires under that last caution, Boyd Hogan is up to seventh on fresh tires, so he is making progress only two and a half seconds back of the lead. He is going for the Neil Pearson strategy. If this does go green to the end, he is going to be in a favorable position. But uh, the difference being that uh, the odds of him having another set of tires on the wall is quite high. Although he's made seven pit stops and there are seven sets of tires, uh, there's a. I'd have to imagine he did fuel and damage at least once, so we'd have to imagine he has a set on the wall. But again, the Neil Pearson strategy is take the set of tires, pray for it to go green, and then win the race on just pure speed. But uh, currently running. Let's see what's the uh, the ticker say in terms of time about two and a half seconds or so behind the race leader is the 69 car. Definitely a bit of a gap to overcome, but again, if it goes green, then uh, I think the strategy is going to do a lot of work for him, but uh, I don't know. I, I think that might be a tall order asking this to go green, uh, the way this race is gone, and uh, even when we have a lot of separation, we see the occasional incident break out, so... I mean, look at this guy with the cars right here. This is a, a recipe for something to happen here. Giglio look, full sand outside. Just licking the stamp, trying to get around his number one, but that's an all going to keep that position securely. And the 45 on the roof, maybe trying to think about a move here, but nowhere to really go with it. The top's blocked, the bottom's blocked, and we've seen how few wide ends most of the time. So we can just ride it out, see what, uh, what happens with these two. Looks like the 16 just driving it in so deep on the high line but can he stay clear yes he does so another high line pass make that uh what three on the night yeah what was the uh what was in the team memo there uh andre pre-race there just go out and lick the stamp make that outside groove your uh your bitch because it's past 11 o'clock at the square and uh send it i guess that might have been your team meeting because that's what he was doing there yeah uh, i mean uh, to assume that we have team meetings assumes that I'm an attentive team owner. 
Uh, basically, what I did was I found some drivers that were fast. I said, you're a team now. Uh, and then I let Robert handle the rest. It's, it's really a foolproof plan. So you basically taken the teams in the same sense as most fixed. This is why whenever someone says they're on a fixed setup team, I laugh. Because a fixed setup team basically means you're sharing what lap you're pitting on. And maybe you let each other go in certain situations. Because there's, there's nothing to really do. Is that kind of the mantra you took to an open setup team, more or less? Um, sort of. Or maybe it's just the fact that I'm lazy and Robert's got the setups anyways. So, you know, uh, kind of his... Uh, so you his take the royalty effect. without doing any of the work, is what you're basically saying. Yes, as our founding father's intent. Yeah, more pay, little less work. So... Nice deal there. I'll call you the Kevin O'Leary doing the royalty deal. Oh, okay. there we go. That's uh, Kyle Amun. We might be seeing them. Actually, we won't be seeing the moon. iRacing hasn't modeled it yet. But uh, we'll go and check the replay here and see what happened to the number 25 automobile. Virtual mobile. I, I see the problem. Oh! He, he doesn't have a hood ornament. <laughs> I, could, I could draw one. I mean, I can't promise how well it will look. <laughs> I do have the technology. All right, let's see what happens here. That is Clayton Hoffman to the inside, JC Gibson in the 09. And that looks like a racing deal, and he dailed it there. And look at all of those marbles there. You could play quite the game oh. of marbles with all those marbles. I, so, I probably stink at that, too. He got oh. tagged uh, by, I think it was the number nine, was it? You can play tag with marbles too. You just like throw them at each other, and if you get hit, you're it, right? I can do that. Yeah, uh, maybe I mean, a very painful way. It's almost like playing paintball, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, war is just high velocity, small tag. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We've lost him. Oh, who? Yeah. We lost somebody. Where'd he go? Delaney. Oh. No. 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 He didn't get... It. No, he I, did not get incidented out on pit road. There's no way. No, oh, there he is. Did I lose him there? Did I just, like, change the camera, or did he actually, like, have issues there? I, I thought he blinked. I did, too, but either way, he had a great pit stop making up... Oh, I didn't see Robert or Alex, so never mind, my thought process is done. <laughs> but Jason S. Taylor stayed out on old tires. I uh, wonder if he's close to using all his up, um, six pit stops with 53 laps. Uh, I don't know if this strategy call is going to work. Um, that S is not for strategy in his name. It could be for a, a derogative word that you tell your kids not to say in elementary school. Now, it, I'm not going to sit here and let anybody talk anything bad about my my very best good friend jason strategy taylor the man who knew full well he was six laps short plus of fuel at charlotte uh and still raced like his life depended on it door slammed several people and then ran out of fuel and left me speechless uh, and it looks like he's going to pull some strategy today. He is staying out. I thought maybe he might come down pit road. Maybe he was just doing what uh, Sean O'Brien was doing, you know, coming down pit road and a little bit later to try to lead a lap, maybe get some camera time. But no, this is what he's doing. He is taking the lead. He's on vastly older tires than most of the field behind him. Uh, I see absolutely no way this could go wrong. I've got full faith in Jason Strategy Taylor. That makes one of us. Um, did that come out, out of my mouth? Ooh, this would be sorry. where... Oh, oh, he's moving. Oh, oh. That's where a hood he, ornament goes. It goes right there. Okay. Ish. So, yeah, that uh, Mustang logo uh, is his new hoard, hood, or, hood ornament. His new what ornament, Cody? Oh, and, uh, and you could order a hood, hood. ornament off of timu.com. I, I could put my invite link in the description so I can get free stuff. So just to mm -hmm. do a little spam there because I'm looking to try to get a... Uh, a free speaker there off of timu.com. Does anybody do hood ornaments anymore? Like Cadillac? Is that a thing people do? Like, well, I guess not even not... like just like the manufacturers, but like people just trying to make their car look cool, you know? I got a mailbox number on mine, um, on, on, on a mirror. 
Um, but hey, you know, we're, we're coming back to green here. Uh, I'd be interested to see what happens with uh, Jason Estaler. A whole bunch of bad, that's what I'm about to predict. But green flag in the air on the accelerator pedal. He's going to do fine now because he's going straight-ish. But now we have to turn, and this is where the problems will come to fruition here. Rick Miller is going to go right around the outside with Delaney uh, right in tow here. And we're about a lot wide here heading into turn three. Tell you what, there was more stacking on that bottom lane than an autistic man at a Lego factory. That was, oh no, a little bit of a wiggle out of the back of the field. Not sure who that was. They were able to save it. So hopefully it wasn't your guy there, Cody. But three wide now. Uh, numerous times over that 41 is a bold strategy i respect it but uh definitely not playing out the way he was okay and kudos to everybody for managing to squeeze three wide outside and not die so uh that is a uh, a level of skill there so kudos to everybody involved in that maneuvering but uh, who do we have on the outside there uh, that's blake who is trying to run the uh, the highest line that is competitively possible now trying to hang on to the outside of Benefield maybe get to Padgett but Benefield trying to make that inside lane work and uh, a little bit of a wiggle from Benefield off the four there that opens the door for Hoitzma to try to fill the gap and up top well it opened the door but I oh, oh we're dead big wreck two, that is not Peterson two. come on Ralph again man oh man Ralph can't catch a break I think if he were to yeah, he's, he's me in the outfield at a baseball game. He can't catch anything here today. No, and a lot of this isn't his fault. Um, this is kind of like the the opposite of the Ralph. Finally, I mean, when Ralph first came into this league, he kind of had a reputation for being kind of aggressive and starting. Oh, he a lot sent of it. Stuff. He oh, just no, sent that's the Ralph. I know. Never mind. I take it back. And Kevin misses another wreck by the skin of his. So does Nolan. Nolan gets to win this game. On board with the perpetrator here. Yep, just way too late into the braking zone. I, I'm not even sure he did break quite frankly. Yeah, or quite Robert Lee, or quite Bob Lee, quite anybody there. I know that was, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna let you stew on that one for a minute. B for, actually, what other kind of stews are there? Um, there's no chicken stew. There's no pork stew. I mean, I feel like everything else is just soup. Yeah, yeah chicken noodle soup, but you don't have beef noodle soup. You just, like so. even bean soup, which is probably the closest thing to a stew, is still called soup. So beef is so special that if you want to have beef in soup form, it gets its own word. Yeah. Well, now that's going to bother me because I, I legitimately don't think there's any other stews. Seriously, we got a fair amount of audience here. Have you ever heard of a different kind of stew other than beef? Isn't there seafood stew? Not that I've heard of, but maybe. Or is that just... No, no. What if, like, let's just go... Hold on, like, hold on. I'm, I'm popping a goog real quick. Let me look Popping a goog. Is that the yeah. verbiage that just... Are those the audio waves that just transmitted through your microwave? Through your <laughs> we're, <not saying>. <laughs> oh, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. Oh my goodness. You have okay, an audio okay. microphone. You have an audio microwave over here, Andre. You're, you're cooking. Right, so, I, so I'm back from popping a goob. <laughs> so a gumbo is a type of stew, apparently, and so is jambalaya. Oh, but then sorry. it says goulash is a stew. There's pork stew, seafood stew, Brunswick stew. I don't know what Brunswick stew is. Is that bowling? Bowling uh, stew, but what? But hey, hey, what about the what about the alternate bowling for soup? I mean, not bowling true. for stew. The question here is like, what defines a soup from a stew? A that's soup, what I need to. Soup need is to less solidified, really. I mean, you have chicken noodles. Chicken noodle, it's very, very small. You don't have to chew it at all. But beef stew, you're gonna have huge chunks of beef and you know big chunks of potato and carrot. Okay, so it says, the difference between soup and stew. In soup, the liquid is the primary ingredient. Soup can be completely liquefied, or it can consist of other elements like meat and veggies that are fully submerged in water, stock, or broth. Stew, meanwhile, is typically chunkier. It contains just enough liquid to cover the main ingredients. But then what about extra chunky soup? 
which you can buy at the store. This doesn't make any sense. Jeez. So that is, that's just false stop. advertisement right there. I mean, you're not getting soup, you're getting stew, but they don't want to they don't want to use that on the can because less people know about less people know the definition of it. Or or is soup or is stew just actually soup, but they don't want to say it because they want to charge more for That stew. does work though, because you know sometimes one th like A could be B and B yeah. is B, but B is not A. You know that that true. I do have one more question for you guys before we go back to green. Is it about when soup or the race? No, when did Motley Crue become classic rock? In 1985? No, that's not that's a different. When did Ozzy become an actor? When did probably like by the 2000s they were probably considered classic rock? Okay. And we're we're getting back under green here as Robert Miller gets a jump and it looks like John Delaney spins his tires ever so slightly. It looks like he may concede the second place to Alex Murray. I mean, in fairness, everybody's spinning their tires now because otherwise they wouldn't be moving. But Murray is to the inside of Delaney off of two. They will go side by side, which is all beneficial for Miller uh, as the leader. But it looks like Delaney's trying to pinch the door down, but he's going to have to relinquish a little bit of space there to Murray. And all the while, Miller not pulling too far away, but Murray will pull back in line. But that may open the door for Boyd Hogan, who is on those fresher good years. Actually, no, he's not. They're all reset now, Corey. Get back in the name of the game. Not talking about soup there, but there's your boy Blake Giglio, Andre, running in the fifth spot, running his outside lane. He's trying to hold his position there, but I think on these initial starts, especially before the tires are uh, up to temp, that bottom lane is just going to be a lot more powerful. So he's going to drop that position. John Delaney in second place. He's recovered from that wheel spin pretty great. He is right on the bumper. Our leader is Blake Iglio into the outside wall. I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. It used to be a lot more common with the old tire model. You'd see cars get tight, slap that outside wall out of two, but that is the first time I've seen a significant instance of that, uh, and we are 357 laps in, so uh, it's been long enough, but uh, unfortunately, Blake Iglio going to have to see. sun in the eyes off of two there. Yeah, that is pretty bright. That's got to be impacting a little bit. Especially for any virtual reality users, which I am no longer a virtual reality user. After five years, I did convert back to watching a pancake for a screen when I do drive. But if you are having HDR, then it is definitely a difficult time. Look at him dusting off the caution flag. Alex Princeton. You can kind of tell when us broadcasters get a little sick of it because we start to deflate every time a caution comes out. But... I was really worried that this race might actually finish before midnight, and I'm glad that uh, I was proven wrong. Alright, so we have off of two. That is Hodgson, who we spoke to. Uh, I would... Racing deal, but I'm going to say 60-40. Princeton, I think, came down a little bit, but it's kind of a 60-40 in my uh, expert opinion. Expert, loosely said. What is that, our 17th caution? Uh... You want to have a guess? I, I don't remember, but I can bring up the graphic. I'm gonna. I'll, I think 17 is a good guess. I'll stick with that. Yeah, I, I think Cody's right. I think it is 17. I've lost count at 13. Hey! Oh, what do I win? A di <laughs> you get a you get the PTR TV digital sticker. Uh, you get a you get a soup stew. Ooh, cool. It'll be a soup sticker. Ooh, I like that. But yeah, no, it's just. Uh... Caution seem to be breeding cautions here with and 40 laps to go. First to pit is Andrew Dyson, so it looks like the first 15, well actually it's even more than that, so I think we have roughly about 20 that stayed out-ish, and the fresh tires will be back, and I'm going to take a gathering that if you pit under this caution, I think under no condition are you going to pit again, but that also, you know, as these laps do tick off, those that stay out there's, there comes a point of no return where there's not enough laps left to pit. You're kind of, your bet is made. That, you know, there's no chance of getting back through the field. So I think we're pretty close to that. And if I'm being honest, guys, I think I may have, I would have thought more people would have pit for that exact reason because, you know, you're not going to pit with 25, 30 laps to go. I don't think there's enough time to go from 30th to 1st. No, it does take a while, especially with how difficult passing has been in this track. So I think a lot of these guys, they are locked into their strategy. They are committed, and to deviate from it now would just do more damage than it would do good. Uh, side note, I have been furiously popping gooks trying to figure out what the difference is between soup and stew, because I just did, I didn't accept the, the explanation we got. And now, I realize, guys, 
We've been a fool. Okay. Oh no. Well, we, we already knew that. Stewing is a method of cooking, which is different from how you make soup. A stew is something that you stew. Now to stew is to put just enough liquid to cover the ingredients. Whereas yeah. with soup, you can use more water. Yeah, soup okay, so is almost like boiling to an extent. You're... Yes, so soup is like boiling, and stewing is just enough liquid to cover. Yeah. So we've been a fool. There is a difference, and it's the cooking method. Yeah, and also, this website was wrong. Because when you have beef stew, I mean, you're eating predominantly the potato, the beef, the carrot, the onion, whatever you put in it. And then the, the, the broth, if you will, is kind of just something to, if you have a, any toast or something, you can sop it up. But that is your primary star of the show. If you have soup, you are fully eating it with a spoon. I am never eating beef stew with a spoon. Uh, well, I don't think I ever have. And if I have, then I don't okay. know. So is is chili a soup or a stew? Oh, my or God. Oh, no. <sighs> We're not, let's not go down this rabbit stoop. hole. Stoop. It's a stoop. Stoop? Because, I mean... Stoop I mean, kid never eats a stoop. Like, there's, like, a million different ways to make chili. So, I mean, like, maybe some of it is stew. I mean, can you stew I think a chili? good chili is a stew, but a bad chili, like from a Wendy's, is more of a soup. Okay, are you really gonna, are you going to say that Wendy's chili is not good? I've never had it. I've never had it, but I've seen how it's made. I mean, a lot of the things I enjoy are made in absolutely abhorrent and questionable ways. Abhorrent? Andre, the 50, the Andre's man had so many 50 cent words tonight that he could buy a PS5, so. But back to a restart. Miller, Delaney, Hogan, and Hogan, and Murray. That is your top four. And now green flag. Again, jump goes to the inside. Delaney caught sleeping or spinning there on the outside. One of the two, but that's going to be Murray in P3 in the green and black car. He's going to go into the inside. They're going to be side by side for second again. And Miller just taking it to his advantage, pulling away, but can the gal go behind, manage to stay in one piece and in one direction? I think the answer is going to be no. Well, I've been proven wrong. I thought Hall uh, was going to go around there, but... Oh, boy. Kevin Steele, was that a block by Kevin Con Steele? I think there was contact. I don't know what the 29s do. And Tanner Marty, I think he might have slapped the inside wall. I, I'm uncertain how to do that, uh, but he kept going, and he's okay. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, also of note right now is just how much all these cautions have changed the field. Looking through the, it, it, there's guys up here that have been running 20th to 30th all race that are now in the top 50. Oh, okay. That was Ho Hogan hitting the outside fence. Oh, there he goes again. He's hot. What are you laughing at? Don't worry about it. And uh, yeah, so, oh, and there's the yellow. And they're dooring under yellow. Yep, this has gone off the rails. To say it was off the rails implies that it was on the rails. I don't think it's been on the rails since stage one, in all honesty, but let's see what happens on the good old replay. What in the hell? I it's past just, 11, you know, we can do it, light cursing. Did he get loose on a straightaway on his own? I, I think so. I, I think with this transition from turn four to the front stretch, the banking does change ever so slightly. And if you're right on that limit of it, yep. it's what happened there. <laughs> and then you just yeah. fishtail. Uh, mm -hmm. Legacy Legacy did not have a good couple laps there. No, they did not. Uh, it was a good effort to save it. I mean, he, he chased that thing all the way down the straightaway, and he almost had it. I think, honestly, if he was driving the Gen 6 car, he... He might have been able to save it, but unfortunately this car, once it starts to slide, there's not a whole lot you can do. So it, it was a valiant effort, but it is going to bring out caution number 18 uh, of the night. Well, at this point, we may as well have two more and just make it be 20. I mean, at least... Yeah, a nice round number. Yeah, um, we're approaching Martinsville level cautions from last year in the fall with 29. Um, let, let, let's try not to have that we happen. We covered that race because I am going to... Thank the living Lord that it was not me if it was 29 uh, cautions in a simulator race. It was Carlos. Yeah, so, yeah, 3Y TV covered it, and the other producer, the other commentator left after stage one. So I commentated by myself until about one in the morning, and that was probably the dumbest thing I've done in a while. 
Yeah, so uh, this is not actually going to be the latest ra I mean, who knows? I mean, 30 laps to go, the potential for... I mean, is it three attempts? So we could probably run up till 420 huh, if we really need to. But I don't think this will run much past 1210 Eastern. We're currently, if you're watching this live, we're at 1135. We do have uh, admin in our YouTube chat saying, so is cereal a stew if you make it with light milk? Light as in a little bit. Okay. Do you um, have a cold stew? No, you said it's got spot. You said uh, borscht, I believe. Borscht is a cold soup, but that's not a stew. Mm. Yeah, it's probably just a cold soup because it says you have to stew it, which means you cook it in the. Yeah, so okay, there can't be a cold stew. There cannot be a cold based stew. Well, hold on a minute, because what are we defining as cooking? Because if you let this, the the cereal get soggy, are you cooking it in the? Milk? So what is the definition of cook now? Now we. I don't know. I, I don't. English is weird. <laughs> cook is. Okay, hold on. Hey Siri. What does it mean to cook something? <laughs> Here's good answer from Wikipedia. Cooking is the art of preparing food for ingestion, commonly with the application of heat. Okay, commonly with the application of heat, but that is not a requirement. So then, yes, cereal is a. So stew. how do you cold cook something? Like, when you take a block of like liquid nitrogen or something, and like, if you like take fruit and if you want to make apple chips, and you just like put an apple into a chamber of liquid nitrogen and like basically freeze it into apple chips as it shatters did you cook it because you transformed the food yes i mean it says commonly with the application of heat so i'm led to believe that altering food for the purpose of consumption in any way is considered cooking so that altering food so if i take a piece of bread and rip it in half i've altered the bread i'm going to consume it did i <laughs> okay as far as Wikipedia is concerned, now obviously... If I uh, throw a pie in your face, no, not in your face, but if I throw a pie in my wife's face and then I eat the pie off my wife's face, have I cooked the pie because I'm eating it but it's been transformed? Uh, it's cooking and it's kinky, so that's a good way. <laughs> I do appreciate that I edited that before <laughs> I uh, said it because I wasn't really going to be you. And, uh, sorry, I don't. that's not my cup of tea, but if it is, I have no problem with that for others <laughs> involved. Green flag in the air here on lap number 373 of this uh, rated M broadcast. We're three wide entering one. That's your boy to the inside. Please don't screw it up because you are in an LMM sandwich right now. Yeah, uh, I did two wide situations. Got me a little bit uh, nervous after how everything's gone. And we're two Dude, wide look at him on the outside. That's like the fourth lane, and he's actually going to make it work somehow. Get a little bit loose and gathers it up, but. Still side by side with his teammate Robert Miller out front. Alex Murray four tenths of a second back. John Delaney. Oh, sitting. look at them back there. Oh boy. Oh boy. They're not. No, nope, there it goes. Nope, That's Delaney. Goes. John Delaney. Oy vey. Oy vey. If we uh. If we had a shot for every uh, caution that's come out after stage one, I think we would all be, uh... Dead. So, yeah. I don't even know where to fo- well, we'll focus on Delaney because we saw his, uh, bad event. You can see Anderson in the wall. Delaney took it four wide. He asked for it. Why- why are we going four wide? He put- he drove it on the apron, he, but he survived, and that's Showfield, so we survived it. Uh, RJ oh, Root got no. loose. So he survives the four wide, and he gets taken out by that? All right, just... I'm Impressive backwards awesome. driving. You know, we saw that with... Um, I can't remember who it was at this point, but... I think it was Wayne Grassy, Grassy yeah. Grassy. I just yeah. can't get over the fact that cooking isn't always the application of heat. So We're who's usually in YouTube chat? Is it Damaris or Kevin? I it's believe it's, Yeah, this is too funny for Kevin. So. All right, Damaris. So do you really think cereal is stew? I mean, it's one of those technicalities. It's like technically a hot dog is a sandwich, but nobody's going to call it a sandwich. Uh, no, no, don't even. You ain't ready for that. You ain't ready for that. We ain't ready for that. 
I'm listening to you guys up in the booth, and based on what you're telling me, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is a stew on me. That's what I'm saying. It, it, I mean, it has to be. Like, Wikipedia never lies. They're never wrong. Yeah, I did. I, we got green there. I didn't hear what Siri said. Did Siri clear any of that up? It sounds like she did. Yeah, she said. So she said that cooking is the preparation of food generally with the application of heat, but that does not mean always. So I'm led to believe that altering food just means cooking. But anyways, you could tell that our conversation goes this astray when we have, I think, 19 cautions. Uh, the double zero, you're in the top 20 right now. Are you going to pull a Haley Deegan off and get a top 10 out of attrition at this point? Oh, baby, we're going straight to the front. I'd like to go ahead and thank all my sponsors, USPS, for uh, putting me in victory lane here. It's all but a done deal. Hey, you guys polish off that uh, cup for me. We're coming to get it in uh, victory lane here. All right, we got Damaris Benefield up here in 18th. We'll let you get back at it. You can have that victory stew if you get it. Yes, sir. I just still can't get over the fact you asked Siri on a live broadcast. For uh, the I, don't, I don't even know remember what room he was in, but uh, hopefully he's in the right room. Uh, I think he was in... Yep, you're good. He was in the chat with Nolan. But you asked Siri on a live broadcast. And uh, Discord picked it up. That's the impressive part. Uh, Look, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta have Siri settle out the, the conundrums in life. Hey Siri, tell me a joke. This race. Oh god, that didn't work. Hey Siri, come on. Hey Siri, tell me a joke. My friends think I make too many graphs, but I know where to draw the line. Ha ha ha. I get it. Uh, good. Well, there was another one that didn't pick it up because my phone was on mute. It was, uh, what do you call Britney Spears' classmates? Britney Spears. Oh, my God. Yep, that, that's a one out of ten, Corey. Hey, that's Siri's fine. We got time for one more. We're still on. Oh, wait, we are, we're on one to go. We got time. Hey, Siri, tell me a joke. What did the hinges say to the wall? I adore you. Uh, uh. Wow. <laughs> Theory says almost as bad as me with jokes. You guys are probably going to be looking forward to the fact that there may be a new channel coming into the mix here in a few weeks because uh, you don't have to listen to this anymore. But here we come. Miller, another restart, another jump, another green flag. Benefield has gotten into second, and I don't think Benefield is going to waste any time with Murray. And you can see your LMF guys just behind on the uh, third row or so. Uh, but Murray, he's fighting hard on that outside as that outside lane is coming in here with 20 to go. But Miller getting that jump in. For Christ's uh, sakes. 21 and... Yeah. Delaney again. Uh, th this race is old enough to buy a beer now. Can, can one of us say the S word? I'm like, this race is... I don't want to say it. Yeah. I, that, it's, uh... It, it, it's sharks. How's that? It's, and, uh... Yeah, the, I'll go uh, from the chopper cam there. We were I think we were going Ayrton Senna there. If gap car. Was that Are was that a gap? Uh, was that a gap? Let's uh let's define. Was that a gap? It was a gap. And uh yeah, Taylor did not run wide on exit there. But I I would say it was a gap. And I think Alex Princeton got incidented out. Um, his car disappeared at the end of that. So we're in that territory now. Hey, so uh, side note, do you guys remember lawn darts? Yeah, I used to, uh, I, I go camping and I think I bought them at a, like one of those discount stores for like five bucks. Wait a minute, so you're telling me they, they still make them? Oh yeah. You know, I was things... gonna say, like, there's no way they still make them because like, I was just astounded at the idea that, like, at one point, somebody said, like, you know what would be a fun game? Let's give kids some random stuff to throw up in the sky and then try not to die. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, they don't make them in that fashion anymore, do they? Yeah, I'm talking about the real ones. I'm talking about the ones that you could kill somebody with. Those were cool. <laughs> this is a... This I mean, like, like, yeah, you could technically play lawn darts with, like, tennis balls or whatever, but that's not fun because, like, nobody's getting hurt. How do you follow Will Smith in the snow? You follow oh. the Fresh Prince. 
<laughs> we're at this point in the broadcast. All right, well, I, so, yeah. We're past. We're pushing midnight. I could look up dirty dad, dad jokes. Uh, I don't think we can go too far. No, it I, really I, it's my channel. Bit. I know the limit. Yes, but also I think the lead maybe has some limits in place. The what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure me and Andre are getting fired after this race. Yeah, probably. So, uh, how is nice a wife like? Ba how is a wife like bacon? They both look, smell, and taste amazing. They also both slowly kill you. Mm. Yeah, I mean, accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that one on air. Oh. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the race for a second. Yeah. So. uh John Delaney, obviously, probably the most dominant car early on in this race. Took tires trying to change up strategy. And uh, it seems like both those cautions kind of uh, did not benefit him with him being involved in both of them. Um, but Are you saying being involved in cautions was not beneficial? That's our level he, of commentary now? Yes, yes. It, it's not <laughs> beneficial to be in an accident. Hey, hey uh, Cody, if you want to be the leader, who do you have to pass? Uh, you have to pass the guy in first so i've already been listening to me yep yep you see i i try to pick up on all your cues andre oh, uh, andre you'll like this one how can you tell the difference between ah and ooh the difference is about three inches yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like three inches is a lot you know it's uh you so, really uh, think about it you know when you get beyond like measuring for millimeters you know okay so uh, we had a question in chat. Who is the biggest mover of the race after we get this race restarted? I don't have the fancy, sophisticated last. graphic for that, so that will have to be... Post-race? Yeah. Um, yeah I'm not sure All right, let's see if we can go 75 feet before we have the next caution. Miller gets in the restart zone successfully. Barney waves the flag. We're going to calamity into turn number one. Right now, I think the biggest mover is actually Steel. Uh, Steel's in 10th. He started back in the 30s, I believe. Uh, but the restart, kind of the same story we've seen uh, oh, Jesus. thus far tonight. We're going to go four wide in the back straightaway. Sure, it's going to end just peachy. A little bit of contact to the rear end of Lloyd Hogan. We're playing bumper cars with the number five of Anderson. Then we're going to go four wide again, because why not? And then we're going to bear into the corner at absolutely high speed. John Delaney getting a huge shot nearly the outside wall but he's able oh. to recover and we're wrecking again Hodge, there we go oh. into the outside wall oh. he was incident kevin steve piles in he had nowhere to go and we're back under yellow marty waves the flag so we are at a point now where everybody is on the lead lap because everybody who has gotten taken out uh incident out so they didn't even get to go a lap down I think that that wreck caught a good amount of people on the uh, incident. I am trying to find the replay here, and well, Kevin was uh, up. From anybody 40. who incidents, okay. So just from a technicality standpoint, I'm just going to be honest with folks. Um, if you incident out, it is infinitely hard to actually get the replay because I racing spazzes out when you're trying to look for it. So we saw most of it live there. So we're just going to kind of go with that. And if you really want to see a wreck, just, I don't know, rewind about five minutes and then five minutes before yeah. that. We have a chat. Does this race have a time limit? I believe the time limit is four and a half hours, I think, is the literal time limit on the server, if I remember correctly. So, we're at um, three hours and 17 minutes. So and let's, let's just get a good camera here. Uh, the lights, I'm looking at the top left. Uh, the lights have not turned on yet. So we are not to that point. A half hour before sunset, the lights do turn on in simulator. and So we aren't that late yet, but we are, what, pushing 7 o'clock virtual time now? Uh, yeah, it is about 7 o'clock. Uh, technically, it's 6.53. Um, but now I'm curious. Okay, so sunset tomorrow when this race will really be run is 7.49. So we've got uh, a little under an hour of daylight left. So, uh, I would assume we can get these laps in and under And an per hour. Fox, uh, so I think with Fox's TV window, uh, they go, I think, usually three hours. So by that logic, um, I should be changing over to 
Uh, Ice Bob, dancers with hits Motown. Yeah, we should be changing this broadcast over to, to Bob's Discount TV Network. And then PTR TV will turn into uh Can we, uh, can can we, we run swap a over to Monk? In the old detective show, Monk? No, how about we go back? No, you know what? My, uh, let's go tune on some uh, Family Double Dare from like 1990. We well, can't pick do that. The, we'll pick the nose and we'll go down the slide and we'll uh, do the obstacle course and dump slide and, you know, we'll get a trip to Spaceland or Space World. Okay, yeah, or... yeah, yeah. Take, take the cripple in a wheelchair and put him on an obstacle course. Thanks, Corey. They <laughs> had, no, 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 no. They had a handicap special episode of that, actually. No way. No, they did. I will, I'll discord you the link later. They actually had a, I'm gonna, yes, it was. They That's had great. a wheelchair participant, and they specifically gave them obstacles that they could do without much mobility. I will send you the link. So, in, interesting comment from the admin in chat. So many suspensions next week. There will be so many suspensions. All the cars so, will be uh, bouncing, because there will be a lot of suspensions. Right, and, uh, well, I don't think you'll have me in the booth next week, because I'm going to attempt to race, and uh, if there's a lot of guys that are really good that get suspended, throw me on the grid. Yeah, so, uh, just to explain it, to get serious for a minute, uh, which is something that we've not done much of, uh, <laughs> there is an at-fault system in the league uh, that goes beyond just the penalty points uh, that iRacing has instead of points. I believe, and one of the admins can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but if I remember correctly, I believe it is three at-faults over the course of two weeks. Uh, and you can rack up all three at-faults in one race. And it's been a lot of drivers. <laughs> A lot of incidents. I, I don't think the admins are wrong. There's going to be a whole lot of suspensions uh, going into next week at Bristol, which is uh, not unfamiliar. We've had some suspensions going into Bristol before, but green flag flies once again. Robert Miller gets on the lap pedal for the 348th time tonight. It looks like Adam Edelman on the outside is going to try to rock it past Murray, but he's not quite going to, be able to get there. Murray's going to get clear. On the straightaway, yes, he does. Oh, there we go. You've got to be, you be kidding me. <laughs> why, why are we wrecking for a 35th? Oh, and they're, and they're wrecking under caution, too, um, over in four. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I, I caught the tail end of that one. Um, yeah, nobody wants to drive, I guess. Cassiani into Showfield, into Root, and Delaney's oh, basically a magnet. John got incidented out. Let me try to get. Oh. I'm gonna try to get Delaney's perspective. Oh, I actually can. This is what Delaney saw. Contact to root. Is that? Don't even tell me that was it. Net code. Yes, it was. Oh, this is <laughs> 23 cautions. And so today, uh, just a random story to fill the time. Uh, Corey, you know I, I race uh, RC cars, and Cody knows that too. Um, Today, we were in the middle of a heat race on the off-road track, carpet off-road indoors. And at the end of the straightaway, there's this brick wall. Uh, they didn't put a 2x4 up because, I mean, it's already a wall, right? Power goes out in the middle of a race. It is pitch black in this building. Lights come back on five seconds later. There is a wad of cars in the middle of the track, and I have a broken shock tower because I drove straight into the concrete wall. Uh, one of the most amusing things I think that has happened all year long, uh, and even then, uh, not as chaotic as what we've seen tonight. Yeah, Andre, check your uh, your Discord DMs there, because I, I found that um, handicap special episode of Family Double Day. But yes, good story. I was kind of focused on that. I, so I, I almost I almost wish we could like put the stubble there up on the screen during caution. I mean, but I can, but we only have five left. I, I, I mean, there's only five laps to go. I, I literally would, but there's only five <laughs> laps to go at this point. Um, for the next PTR TV broadcast, maybe we'll do a double dare during our side by sides. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not monetized yet. I don't care. I like to have fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun tonight, and uh, I and, don't think they're done right And uh, just to, uh, I mean, a lot of the viewers here in the league, they know, but, you know, PTR TV, we do try to be. You know, a high-class channel. We, uh, I've, I try really hard at that. We've had a lot of uh, big success over the years, but at the end of the day, we give what the league asks for. The league wants us to have fun. They're not looking. They're looking for a, a quality broadcast. You know, good commentary, good visuals, but they want the commentators to have fun. And if we were calling this race like a Coke race, 
or you know NASCAR on TV you don't want to see that. I mean, we're not going as far as moon car. I mean, it'd be fun to do a moon car broadcast, but, you know, we're kind of like bridging the gap between what could be perceived as a professional broadcast, but a little bit of moon car elements kind of less the uh, the language. So that's kind of what the league wants us to do, and that's why we're doing it. So hope you're enjoying it because, you know, like I said, three guys in the booth just chilling, having some fun, and my, trying to make some light of what we're watching. My hope is that, because I know there's going to be a lot of drivers, including the admins, that are going to be coming off this race pretty livid. Uh, there's a lot of people straight up not having a good time. Uh, but maybe when they go back and watch the broadcast and they hear the absolute inane things <laughs> that we're discussing, uh, you know, maybe maybe it, it makes them I mean, laugh. How many broadcasts uh, do, you, do you watch that have a, a five-minute speech on the definition and differences between soup and stew they just did uh, yeah <laughs> but here we come I th is are we in regulation yeah this is a regulation green white checker we're going to take the green at 399 so all three of our green white checkers are still intact if need be uh and miller has gotten the jump every single time so i'm hard pressed to believe he's not going to get it but let's find out definitively right now and turn that restart zone He's going to get the jump, and uh, Murray out sleeping the Benefield. He's got a decent start. He's going to not necessarily be in send at range, but, you know, he's going to go for it here with two to go. It looks like Robert Miller able to defend the lead. If he can just get to the white flag, we can have this race official. And to get to the white flag, well, he's just got to make it through another set of turns. Into the trial, we has got the flag in hand. That's it. How we're we're finishing. <laughs> we are official. Just before midnight, and behind him, we've got the 83 of Benfield trying desperately to block both lanes, keep second place on that podium. Alex Murray wants it. I don't think either of them are going to be close enough to make a move for the lead, but for second place, it is still on the table. A huge lunge out of the fourth place car into the outside wall. He's going to pull a Ross Chastain, but Robert Miller takes the win at Richmond after a very long and arduous night. It is finally over, and, and they're, they're still again. <laughs> Very fitting. Yep, so full marks go to the 91, to the 91, go to the, the 15 car. I don't even know where I'm thinking at this point. But, you know, at the end of the day, whenever these races go astray, you want to at least see a guy who should have won the race win the race. So he obviously had the speed to do so. Benefield with a second. Of course, Delaney got taken out by the uh, occurrences that happened. But good to see somebody who deservedly had the car uh, go ahead and put it in victory circle. Robert's going to burn it down to the ground with his LMM teammates. And no, oh, don't do that, Robert. You still got to pass post race tech. I want to bend that nose in. Oh, wait, you can't because it's high racing. Uh, facts. So while he's doing that, uh, let's go ahead and go up to the blimp cam here and let's go ahead and give you the final rundown of results here today from the Richmond Raceway, no longer International Raceway. Getting that win with the 90, I believe it was 92 laps, led Robert Miller. Second place, you find Adam Benefield, second, started second, finished second. Alex Murray with the third. Blake Giglio in fourth, and LMM top four and five with the Giglio and Lucas Hoitzman in fifth. Padgett, don't know how he pulled that off and didn't incident out. He's in sixth. Dyson, same thing. Uh, Chris James in eighth, Boyd Hoggett in ninth, and then Clayton Hoffman in the top ten. You can really say that about everybody. How did they not incident out of this race? Finishing 11th was Brandon Pierce. Solid running for him. Uh, 12th is Sean O'Brien Jr. 13th, Tanner Marty. 14th, Robert Anderson and his crushed cornflakes. 15th is Demars Hickenbottom. Surviving through all the attrition to get a 15. Matt DeCiani comes 16th. Pat Tanner 17th. Kevin Steele in 18th, which was such a promising run early on. 19th, Raymond Root after some late race contact. And 20th is Ralph Hutchinson. Oh, and yeah. Just, uh, well, I, I got to restart it. Just got to reload the graphic here, and then looking back from the top 20, Neil Pearson is going to be three seconds back in 21st. Jason Strategy Taylor, he tried to pull some strategy, and road led right to 22nd. Dustin Hall going to be P23, disappointing after a uh, mostly top 10 running all night long. Jeffrey Souza, number 13 machine, brings it on P24. Jim Schofield going to bring it home 25th. Kyle Amoon is 204 seconds back, apparently, specifically. Uh, in 26. JC Gibson, uh, from here on out, it's the graveyard. It's the drivers who did not make it to the end. 
uh, they will not be uh, forgotten. Jason Gibson, John Delaney, a few names that I just missed. Alex Princeton, Devin Medeiros, Randy Drumhiller, Patrick Getter, Wayne Grassy, Dylan Chris, Travis Cranbor, Dalton Mobley, Tracy, and Long, who was taken out before the race even started by Mother Nature. And now, I believe it is time to get into some post-race interviews. Yep, we'll head right down to Victory Circle, where we find the number 15 car of Robert Miller. Yeah, we already have that graphic. We do not need that. We need this one. All right, Robert, Corey, and the guys up in the booth, you got us? I'm here. Oh, well, I was making sure you're still, obviously you're still awake, but I don't know how the patience is after watching those last 50, 60 laps, just caution after caution. You, you had to get restart after restart, and luckily you nailed every single restart. No penalties. You learned that one on the first one, and you just had a great car overall. Just kind of summarize your race and how it was dealing with all those yellows at the end. Yeah, that first restart, I wasn't paying attention. So, yeah, that's my fault. I, I said sorry, Adam. I'm like, I just wanted to make it interesting, Adam. You know, it was, it was fun. Just come back here with me. So uh, there's that. Um, other than that, we came through the field, like how easy it was, made me have a really good feeling how much car, how much speed the car had. Um, I think John had the best long run. He knew how to really take care of his tires better than anybody here. Um, but I think I actually had the best overall car, I think I think I say, with next to Adam. Like we were pretty much neck and neck to each other. So it was, it was a close race between us three. Um, and then the after the first, the third stage started, I knew that I had to get by John at some point, like catch him napping and saving because he was saving hard. And uh, I knew I could pass him and I really pushed it. So I just took advantage of it and I caught him napping with it. And then I figured I had a, my old man instincts was happening and then that we were going to get a caution fest the rest of the race. And sure enough, it happened. So it, it ended up working out in my favor there. Yeah, I think that caution total ended up being 22 to 23 on the evening, so it was definitely a cluster there. But overall, we saw the track change quite significantly. It was about 110 to start the race. I think the temp ended up probably in the mid-80s there and probably ran this a little bit longer than people thought, uh, pushing sunset here at Richmond. How did the car, the dynamics of the car change, if any, over the course of the race, and how did you have to adjust to that? Um, the start of the race, it's really sensitive to the heat. Uh, the, the hot track was really making it easy to overcook your tires. Um, and it showed for sure in that one really long run we had, I think the end of second stage, um, I ended up doing it actually. <laughs> and that's how Adam got by me. I really wasn't paying attention to my tires and I destroyed them basically. And uh, I learned from that and washed it better and it, and it worked out. So, and as track cooled, the more you could push to live it longer and it's not gonna, uh, show up until later in the run the, the cooler the track goes yeah and you did just that you pull it off you had all the perfect restarts at the end you sealed the deal we'll see if you can go back to back on the short track of bristol next week but i know you got some people to thank for your uh for your victory here on the evening yeah logitech g altus esports um we built a great uh coke set for tuesday and uh, i just built off of it to uh to into how i drive because i drive weird compared to them um and yeah, thank you to them. Thank you to my wife for uh, dealing with me, having a, something to do on Saturday night instead of being around her, but she'll, she'll get over it. <laughs> Brave words there said. I don't, I don't have the guts to say it myself, but congrats again to you, man. And we'll catch you next week at Bristol. Appreciate y'all. Good. Now, second place. Uh, who wants to talk to Adam Benefield? You know, that's always a fun one. I'll let Andre, so that way I don't keep him talking for too long. Yeah, keep him talk, keep it short, Andre. You know how he is. He'll... <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk the whispers. Keep it short. We know Adam likes to talk. <laughs> Mr. Benefield, you got a cabbie? I'm here. All right. Well, you're most certainly here. You got a penalty right at the start of the race. Drove your way back up to the front. Brought it home right where you started, P2. Tonight was, uh, well, it, it certainly was something, wasn't it? I got a penalty because of Robert. Let's be clear on that. That was 110% his fault. <laughs> and I would say, not even 110. Uh, yeah, well, well, I'm going to say 110 because 100 was his fault, and then his teammate was the other 10% because his teammate drove straight through me, and that's the reason why I got a black flag. So, I don't know. This dumb rule. I don't. I think uh, Robert's the one that jumped. I, I tried to stay pacing, uh, and, and I got... I'm black. I don't. I don't think it's right. I think it's a dumb rule. We don't need to be running the restart boxes if if that's the way it's going to be. Because it it put me playing catch up for quite a while, and and I just think it's dumb. That's a unfair deal right there, and I'll be very vocal about it and probably get in trouble. But it's it's a dumb rule. 
and I don't, I don't like it. I, I agree, honestly. I, I think iRacing has got some work to do on the restart boxes. But hey, 22 cautions on the night. Uh, how does that uh, affect your confidence going into Bristol? Do you think that race is going to be more of the same? I really don't even want to show up for it. I mean, it was an embarrassment, <laughs> really. Uh, like, I, I was so pissed and aggravated with everything. Like, we were, were running over. It looked like Coda, man. Like, they're just driving over one another to, to, to gain spots, and it's just stupid. So is what it is well, if you watch yeah. the broadcast you'll at least have uh heard us talk about beef stew and soup that may have entertained you yeah y'all yeah, were talking about all kinds of what? food all night yeah, yeah but... maybe we were a little bit hungry but uh on a more serious note uh really good points day for you uh finishing second and uh, i think you got some stage points as well there in stage two and uh, overall you know been a pretty steady consistent year you're racking up some good finishes and uh how do you feel about your consistency going forward i mean it's just pure talent and Obviously. you know it's it's uh shouldn't be a surprise to anybody i mean uh when you got a beard like that and uh you know you swing a golf club like that you know just uh stuff comes easy i mean no way around it and i you know i, I heard some rumors adam that uh, you actually put uh, put a brick under your gas pedal so you can't go full throttle just to give the rest of the, the guys a chance uh what do you have to say about those rumors uh, 100% true. Um, really, it's just I'm surprised they're still letting me run this league with uh, the amount of talent that I bring every single week. But, uh, you know, somehow they still do. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, Dustin Hall, you know. I mean, in uh, Race EPI, they, they give me uh, a good piece every single week, along with Team Conti. Uh, we're, we're hitting on all cylinders over there, too, so it's good. And, and uh you know we, we just martin pc man i mean uh couldn't do it without them best freaking pcs on the market uh you wouldn't go to a dollar general to buy your motor for your race car so why don't you go and and spend some money on something that's going to be uh be good and make sure it's reliable and and performs at its best so uh you know all those guys you know I mean, they just make it easy. And, you know, I just show up and, and put on display my God-given talent every single week. When you're not uh, moonlighting as a professional golfer at that, uh, I, I can't imagine how you split those two lives. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, you kind of already gave your shout-outs, but is there anything else you'd like to thank? I just – Alex Murray had to go pee, so I was having to – say a bunch of crap to give him time because he asked me to talk a lot so that's, that's <laughs> why i was doing that <laughs> oh, you're the one to ask that <laughs> no I, uh just everybody that makes it possible d and kevin for putting on this awesome league uh tonight wasn't our our uh great you know our best night by no means but uh d and kevin will get it cleaned up and we'll get back to popping on all cylinders and um you guys for broadcasting it even though you won't interview me under a caution because you say I talk too long. I, heard, I hear you, Corey. <laughs> you talking hey, crap I, about me. I'll be, I'll you know, be just the one that says it out loud. We all say it DM, but it's all good to jokes, but, uh, you know. <laughs> John John is still the king of long interviews. Meanwhile, that, let's, that bring guy... in, uh, let's bring in Alex here because we don't want him to fall asleep while Adam doesn't stop talking. <laughs> oh, he made it back from the bathroom, so I'm good. Yeah, I, th I told you to take a while. <laughs> so uh, go ahead, Cody. It's all yours. All right, Alex, uh, congrats on the top three run today. Uh, walk us through your race and uh, all the craziness that happened. Uh, pretty much keep the tires on it and and hope we didn't get involved in any anything that would ruin our day. I mean, car was pretty decent. I, I think, you know, obviously Adam and Robert and even John had a better car than we did, but we managed. I think we had a, a top five car there at the the end of the race and i i think we got lucky with a couple of those yellows and then um just had to keep the tires on it that was the that was the biggest thing is just keeping the tires on it yeah and with with all that you were top five most of the race i uh, don't think we really saw you outside now early on in the season you've been top five in almost every race uh is there something that you're doing different this year in terms of your driving style or is it just starting to click uh I don't think I've changed my driving style. I've, I think I've changed my mentality of, you know, these are long races and, and you can't get everything 
in the first stage because, you know, obviously you've got to be there at the end. So the biggest thing is just remember to stay calm, just keep the tires on it. Don't make any dumb moves and be there at the end of these things. Absolutely. Now, of course, with great results comes a great support system. Is there anyone you want to thank? Ooh, that Obviously, was a good line, Shamrock Auto That was a good Care. line. Sorry to cut you off. That was a good line. <laughs> no, Go good. ahead, Adam. Uh, Shamrock Auto Care, BRTV, Caliber Collision, P1 Coffee Co., uh, SimRapMarket.com, um, my family, girlfriend, um, everyone at Prodigy Sports puts in a lot of work, and, and I think it's showing on the track. So uh, hopefully next week at Bristol we, we can get it done and um, get ourselves locked in. Now, before we let you go, is there anything either one of you want to ask each other? Normally, there isn't two How drivers. long did it take you? Well, first off, I got to ask you, Cody, how long did it take you to come up with that little segue? That was good. Uh, just kind of came out. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> That's it. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> yeah, is there anything you guys want to ask each other with you guys both in the booth and us already going over our TV time frame? Yeah, can I get that Coke set up? Mm, no. <laughs> All right, well, we have no. to cut out of this broadcast and head into uh, girls' bowling championships here on PTR TV. So, shit, I thought you were about to say girls going long. Well, it is past it is <laughs> past yeah. midnight, so <laughs> may, may as well. We'll uh, we'll let you guys go and have a great night. I think you guys. All right, thanks, Scott. All right, well, that is a broadcast here. I want to thank uh, Andre and Cody for helping me out. I will say I have five songs that I usually play in my interview playlist, and I'm, I am never hit number five. I'm on number five here. So that meant we had a lot of talking here today. So any final thoughts as we wrap this up? I just hope Bristol's better is the only thing I can say. If there's another 24 caution race, um, there's probably going to be some changes and don't think anybody really wants to see any changes to the league and how it's run. I, for one, am extremely excited to watch the three drivers who are not suspended next week duke it out at Bristol. Uh, it's going to be a great uh, a great battle. If you ever seen the end of the, uh, the Cars movie where it's just three cars on the track, that's what we're going to be seeing uh, with all the suspensions, but uh, it's still going to be a great race. So looking forward to it. Uh, again, thanks to uh, 100% Cup Series and Corey for having me in the booth and allowing me to, uh, well, be a bit of a nuisance. But, uh, you know, it, it was a night for sure. Now it is time to go pass out. Yeah, I don't know who's going to I mean, we uh, the TV coverage right. for next week is still TBD, but we'll uh, figure that out. And everybody, make sure you like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll be with you soon enough here on PTR TV. That's Corey, Andre, and Cody signing out. Have a great night, and we'll catch you next time.